drop yeah. on that one. Right. So we're ready. We got yeah, lights. Yep. Okay. So um, I'll call uh, the meeting to order. Hubbardston Planning Board um, and announce that um, Planning Board meetings are broadcast live and digitally recorded. Uh, we do have a quorum, so uh, we open our meetings with. Uh, you know, we didn't have our name tags out. I can't find them. But to order. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right. Um, Eric Dack, uh, Christopher Monroe, uh, Bill Holman, uh, Francois Steiger, and Alice Liddell are the members. Since we don't have our our name tags, um, so if, generally I call for public comment. But that doesn't include items that are actually agenda items. You'll get a chance to speak to those. And I don't see any other member of the public here. So we, we do it in the end. If somebody comes in late, they can speak at the end, the second one. Uh, we don't have minutes to approve tonight, Correct. I believe. So we're going to move to our first uh, uh, on the agenda action items, which is a, a request for a special permit extension for um, 26 Worcester Road. Gardner Road. Worcester. Yes, I, oh, okay. that, was, that the was the one we fixed. And I did fix it in here. So this has been, what they're signing has been distributed to the board to read in our documents, but yeah. I want to tell the board that Bill added, Bill proof, Bill read it and had a couple of uh, corrections, well, additions, because we have to make a specific finding that the board finds credible causes for delay. So he added that language. And then, um, the other thing is that I changed this a little. This is not a special permit. It was an earth removal restoration permit. Mm -hmm. And it isn't important except that a majority is all that's needed. Mm -hmm. And a special permit, you need a super majority. So we need three signatures tonight. Um, and I think people pretty much are familiar with this project, mm -hmm. um, except probably Christopher, who came on the board later. So we'll give you a one minute sure. summary is that the Catesto Trust, and Ann Smith is the trustee who's sitting right there, is it was a farm that had it's a, big, a big piece of land. But they had, I've forgotten how many acres, but you could tell me. Open? That were the, yeah, in the pit. Seven. Seven, okay, out of? 30. 30, yeah, I remember something like this. Anyway, and they, it wasn't really just gravel they took out of it, it was clay. Mm -hmm. And so it had to be restored because it had a gravel permit license and she wants to sell it. And um, so we went through a really big process on how to do that, but basically it's regrading, which of course you have drainage and all those issues. Bill put quite an extensive uh, set together with us. And then a company called Casella um, Organic. Organic. Organics was gonna come and add short paper fiber sludge from the Irving paper mill to the sand that, that they have on the property yeah. still. Overburden. Yes. The and loam. Loam, right. And create a synthetic soil mm -hmm. for the top. It's used, it's been used by farmers in town. The reason it's sort of prized sludge is because it's, it's not sewage sludge really. I mean, it comes out of a treatment plant, but it's almost all short paper fiber, yeah. few homes. So it was all this great plan and then COVID hit and the plant kind of shut down. There just wasn't a demand for that product. So there was no sludge. So. It's been put off. There's no paper draw. And I think they made tissue paper. They make a specific type of paper. Anyway, it wasn't in demand. We know that because we've been in touch. He's, he's <coughs> been in touch with us. So we want to extend it for two years to allow that to happen. And in the meantime, the trust is selling the property to Alan Crane, who I believe is our other guest tonight, right? Yeah. So you, they've had a chance to read this, and I've made the correction. Uh, the only thing, he's got to follow all the same stuff. It just gives him a two-year um, extension. And we hang on to the bond because the bond is, of course, to secure that the work is done. And if it weren't done we, at the end of two years, we could spend it to get it done. But in the end, assuming you do it right, it gets returned. And, you, and this always becomes tricky. Do you return it to the person that put it up or the person that owns the property? So I have specified in this as to the person that owns the property at the time of the sale. Yeah, so it's going to transfer to Alan. Our purchase and sales agreement. Okay, so okay, just so you know that we're returning it to you, to yeah. Alan. Right. Right, at right. the end. Okay, so if everybody's ready, we'll take a vote on extending. Uh, I don't have a copy of that one. Yep. Sorry. It doesn't, you, there's, it's all, it's the same as what's in the documents, except Bill's line, the board finds credible causes for delay. And I fixed the heading because I had put 
yeah, that Gardner was, Road in The way wasn't anything they could have helped. And I eliminated, oh, special, special, because it's not a special permit. It's, it's a, so if you want to look at it too, just don't um, send it down to that end. Just don't mark it up because those are the only two ones. And we're going to sign one to keep it and give them one because the closing's Monday to record. That's all we, we already received that, right? Didn't we see that one? Yeah, uh, just added it. Yeah, okay. Okay. So if we're ready to sign, we'll take a vote to approve it, and then we'll sign it. So I make a motion. motion to approve. Okay, to approve the special for the uh, the other thing we will permit is restoration. Restoration. Yes, right. Thank you. Is there a second? <laughs> second. Okay. Um, okay. All in favor, live all yes. I, I quick oh, discussion. Oh, that, it, yeah, quick discussion. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. Quick question. When is the uh, uh, when is the transfer taking place? You say. Well, it was supposed to be tomorrow, but it won't be until Monday. Okay. And all parties have agreed. I just want to state for the record that all parties have agreed that the terms that are outlined here are acceptable not only to the seller but also to the buyer. You understand the full responsibilities that come along with yes, this I here. Do. You also understand that before you can uh, do any kind of work there, you still have to come in front of the board and work with us on the matter of how the restoration yep. has to proceed. This is not something that you can just go in by yourselves I and decide on how you're going to be doing the restoration. Quick question, are you planning, and, and again, this is just a, a question that potentially can change. Are you planning on using the same person or, or organization that was originally engaged with the Catastos? Yeah, she's got me all set up, everything's good. Okay. There is coordination with the police and other things with traffic and I mean, you really need to involve the town in it. I so just want to make sure you understand. This is a big I project. I've been following this this whole time. I know every step of the way. <laughs> so yes, sir. All right, good. And uh, finally, uh, the extension you feel that is considered to be reasonable for the timeline that you need in order to be able to extend. Yep. This is an exception that we're putting in place, and it means, therefore, that we are expecting you to be able to work. Yeah, well, basically, like she said, it'd be done if COVID didn't hit. I, I understand that, but yep. I also understand that different, different organizations, such as potentially yours, as maybe different types of priorities for how you're going to be using the land, your financial resources, et cetera, as well as the context that you have. Yep, right. I understand. I do not know, Madam Chair, given the fact that this has been already extended once, is there a possibility to further extend it if it were potentially at all necessary? It hasn't been extended. It no, no, no. Years. Once, once this extension oh, goes through. Oh, if you right? didn't get it done in the two years? I don't know. It depends on the cause. I mean, if COVID locks us down okay. again, I think he'd be entitled. All right. So if there's we have to make this there's finding nothing to, there's that nothing it to was a credible causes yeah. for delay. Well, okay. Can I, I should put that on my motion then, too. It was a credible delay. Well, you can say as written. As yeah. written, as written. 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 written, which is fine. Which is what I did. Good. The state offices also closed. Right. Casella could not get in touch with the state offices to get the permits that he needed. Yeah. This has a very high visibility, by the way. Uh, and I'm just stating this here because this would be the very first gravel pit that would be restored. And from our well, perspective, it's not a gravel pit, it's clay, well, clay pit. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> our first restoration, which is a huge yeah. deal. <laughs> the point, the point I'm trying to make is, is there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of eyes on this here. We want to do this here correctly. Yeah, I, We've, I mean, I and and, and the I because really know this. I've been watching per this. Perfect. The Catisos have been excellent <coughs> working with us, and, and I just want to make sure that we can continue this relationship. Okay. Madam Chair, no more questions. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Okay, hearing none, we'll sign. Make sure it's Oh, we need to take a vote. We right. yeah, we oh. Have a vote. oh, we haven't voted. That was no. discussion. That's right. Okay, uh, so ready to take a vote? Yep, I am. Okay, Liftall, aye. Steiger, aye. Holman's aye. Monroe, aye. Okay. Do you want to start? Make sure it's in blue ink, please. Okay. Why don't we sign two and just send them down, yep. two? So, Alan, you grew up in town? Yeah. Yep. This will be my 37th year here. <laughs> or it is my 37th year here. When's your birthday? <laughs> it's 
really nice to see it change hands with someone in town. Yes. Yeah, well, her land and bust my mother's land. So it worked out pretty good. And you don't want to upset your mom. No. <laughs> <laughs> Which that's pretty hard to do anyway, so. <laughs> Probably most easy to go in the right now. Oh, Back to you. And Eric, because it's not a special permit, it's a gravel remover permit, I don't think you can sign no. in place of, actually, we have in place of John. Otherwise, no. I'd let you, but I don't think you can. That's not the role that she has. Okay, so You've we'll keep one. Before. I'm going to give you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> So I'm going to take over to <laughs> Mr. Different circumstances. Oh, thank yes. you. Yeah. And good luck. Good luck. Right. And thank you very much for coming yeah. and making this happen. I'm happy it's finally working out for y'all. You're kidding. You ain't kidding. This you is guys six went months of jumping through hoops. Mm -hmm. You guys really? went through a lot. With so. the mortgage company? It's not, well, not with you with the mortgage company. Oh, my God. Really? No, really. We started this last December. Yeah. No, you guys are in here a lot trying to work this out. <laughs> so good yeah, for you. Was. I'm happy for you. Thanks. Thanks. So I'm just giving up. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Thank you. Thanks. Good luck. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. So our next order of business um, is an informal meeting, which we do encourage. So there's nothing really that he's presented to the board except the documents we put in uh, regarding the country hen. And it's Bob Beauregard who's here on that matter. She can go first if she wants. I mean, I was here yeah. last. So. No, that's all right. Okay. We're well, everybody gets Actually, any next door neighbors. Yep. <laughs> She's at the church, Bob. Mm -hmm. So oh, okay. I, w I just wanted because Bob actually has been, I mean, he was before us first with a question because he came back, not before us, but he talked to me months ago with these plans. And I'm a little bit head scratching, so I asked him, could he orient us with a. So I got copies for each. Okay. So basically what I'm, I'm mean, looking I, for. I downloaded mine, but that's all right. I know the property really well. Yeah. Um, he mows it pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mow that's, it. Oh. People want to, that's all right. I have an extra. Plus, I, uh, I, Jimmy grew up I have one more. Okay. I think we're, Jimmy okay. grew up in the house where the bathhouse is. Right. And I used to work for his dad when I was on the fire department. Here we go. So just to, just to start off a little bit, um, I, I was, I printed the assessor's map, right? Exactly. This is the right parcel, right? Mm -hmm. So it's Williamsville. You turn off from Gardner Road, and there's a little house. This is actually wrong. this is north, right? Yeah. yeah the this is oh, okay. Yeah, the map here is backwards. Yes, I've written upside the way down. The road is yeah. this way. Yeah. This is the first house so on the left as you pull down Williamsville. Like little green lot. The little, <coughs> the little house with the one car in front so of it. Coming on this yes. way, yeah. and, then I and the church is almost across the street from it, which would be here. Well, you got the little house across the street, and that used to go with the church. Anyway, why don't you orient us a little bit better? Take us down Gardner Road from. So, if, if you've got, if you're looking at this like this, and you go down Williamsville Road, three Williamsville, is the little cottage house that's on the left-hand side. Right next to the church. Right across, across the, the street the from across the church. Across the church from the street. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's where I've been lost in this. Okay, got it. And then there's an entrance to the new facility that we built out back. Okay. And then there's the big house that was the, where the proper, proper property originates, okay, from seven Williamsville. So we have three, five, seven, and nine that we own all of. So three, three is lot one, yep. five is lot two, seven yep. is lot three, Nine is lot four. That's correct. So you come down Williamsville and it's like this. I mean, you come down Gardner. No, Williamsville Road, huh? Williamsville Road. Then you go on to Williamsville, and the church is here. This and Gardner. then there's the house on yeah. the right, right behind the church. And this is all. This is across, across the from the church, not the correct. house behind the church. Yeah. Okay. The house behind the church is right. All right. Close. I had this on the wrong side of the street, which is why this is backward, folks. So don't. Okay. They don't. You don't have. They don't have this anyway. This was. Yeah, you're kind probably of only up. showing the parcel. That's seven Williamsville. That entire parcel big that one. you have yeah. right here. The yellow. Uh, I've got a big one right here. Yeah, that show I can us. Open show up. us. That yeah. kind of shows the whole yeah. thing. It was all put together. Yeah, it's got the in the corner there. 
Yep, you can that's see exactly it what we have. When they put the big pines. Yes, I had. Okay, I was thinking this was on the other side. Okay, I got it. All right. This this wouldn't print like this printed. <laughs> I don't know why. I tried a hundred times. I just didn't <laughs> get it to do it. We yeah, we appreciate it, but now I know where my mistake was, which is so now I'm ready so, to go. <laughs> so there's a little house. For really years and years and years, um, three Williamsville, which is lot one, has been taxed separately got the the uh, mm -hmm. the tax bill right here the, the whole point in this is what we're trying to do is we're trying to split this up so that we can sell off lot one and lot three because we really don't need it for the farm basically it's just sitting there and it's costing me a lot of money <laughs> to maintain it and whatever whatever else we have to do sure. um, they would, it would be necessary to have an easement um, between lot one and three. No, between lot three and lot four, because okay. there's a septic system that goes up through there. Um, okay. What I'm trying to do, and what I, what I'm looking for, is a verbal approval so we can draw up the maps so that I can separate this. I realize it doesn't have the frontage. I realize it doesn't have the acreage, but that's the way that it's been for so many years. We basically, when we bought all the property, shot ourselves in the foot. Yeah, because once you <coughs> buy it, you're supposed to combine it. But this, uh, I mean, it's not supposed to redivide it, but this is 200 feet of frontage, yep. and this has 200 feet. Yes, it does. So. And so does the entrance have 200 feet. And these both have 80,000 square feet. That one's just under, you see. It's 1.83. Because they created okay. a little hardship when they put them together. Yeah, they don't have the acreage. Is it 80,000 square feet or is it two acres? It's two acres. You have to have two acres with 200 feet of frontage. Right. Oh, okay. Is it either or? or no, it's no, both. It's both. both. <laughs> they create both. Back in the 60s, there was no zoning in Hubberston, and the company came in and started building up these small campground lots off the Pinecrest where I used to live. And the town started the first zoning back in the 60s because of that. It was 100 feet, then an acre, and then over the years, they upped it to 200 feet and two acres for every building lot. Is there a house on, there's a house on this house, acre, the right. little one? There's a little house on that. Okay, and what about the other two? Does the lot house, three have a house? house? In the middle lot. lot three has the big farmhouse on it. Okay. What, what's what's on lot five? I'm sorry, lot lot two, which is number five. That's lot, just lot two is the new buildings that we built out that back built, behind of behind number seven. And that's the driveway going up to the farms. I, I see now. Okay. And these are just yeah. If you look at lines. the big map here, yeah. you can see the buildings on the map. The little house is here. Got that's it. the bathhouse that we do want to go with the property here, and that's the mansion house they want to sell mm -hmm. and then lot four is vacant or lot four has a we we tore down yeah. a house and we built the shower house basically it's a shower house for all the employees so it continues to be used by used. your facility for right and we would production. keep that okay we need that for the farm it's yeah. part of our biosecurity plan yeah you have right. to have that so why if if and this is owned by the farm too right Yes. So, I don't speak for the board, I just speak for me. But if you have, we, in order for us to do an A&R plan, we have no authority to make undersized lots once at all. We just don't have it um, to create undersized lots. You'd have to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals and get yep. a variance based on some factor, right? But my suggestion, I don't know, my suggestion would be if you're going to keep this lot anyway as a shower house, why not resize this one to get your two acres in? I mean, you, you're not going to sell it anyway, resize right? Resize what? Resize lot, 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 lot four. four. Lot make three. It I don't see any way you can get Which is the shower house that you want to keep us on. That lot. I don't what, see any way to do that. The, the, lot tiny, one. the little house. No, there's flat no three. way to get 200 flat feet three. of frontage. And what's That's why I'm saying it already exists. It's been like that for... Yeah, but once, well, once, once they bought <coughs> it and they combined it into one deed, yeah. 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 all bets were off. Question. It's all one lot now. What, what is the frontage on lot one right now? Do you know? I'm, I'm not sure. I think I have which one's lot one? one? I'm looking at it That's backwards. a small one here. 
plot point. I'm reading. Oh, what one? I was reading so number that's three. three. Yeah, that's, right that's three. Yeah. Williams so Road by yeah, 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 yeah. That one's that one right there. Yeah, one's a lot wrong. Right. I think I tried to look that up and it said zero or something. So I was trying to figure out a way you guys could do this. How many how many feet of frontage on the access road? Two hundred. And that's required because. Oh, wait a minute. All right, wait a minute. Let me look at this for a second. He has a second plan too, which I we know should he does. Get. Hold on. Because back. I didn't bring that with me. Many years ago, on the zoning board of appeals, Mike Capuccio came up with an idea for Parsons Lane, where they swapped property lines, and it worked out. Because and you might be able. Um, let me look at it for a second. May I ask uh, behind lot one? Oh, no, you can't do that either. What is there? It's the fish and wildlife area. You Conservation line. Oh, this oh. is all. What about this? Yep. I see. What about the hash this? line? Just all. Yep. So he really. How many is feet of frontage do we have in a little lot? That's what I'm we're trying, trying to, to get find it out. from the assessor. What next, if we take a portion of this? this? So what if I didn't what? say on this, right? No. Oh, we can't. Oh, here we so go. So there's. No, that won't work. There's the scale. So that is 20 meters. You're working against the doctrine that if you buy two lots, th lot, non-conforming lots that stand alone and every abutter is separate, owned in separate title, then you keep your non-conforming status. But once you buy the lot next door, you can't redivide it. Right, along well, it was the all way. sold in one piece. And you can't. Yep. And yeah. you can't. I was just trying to think of how to do this, but we can't make oh, is that right? yeah. conforming okay. lots that have 200 feet of frontage. I can't uh, steal frontage off any no, one of those you have three. The minimum, you have the minimum on each one of them. He but says, uh, Mallory says 186 feet. So that's not too All right, far. what if we do this? It only needs 14, 14 feet. more feet. Not even. All right, what, what, what if we do this? 14 and a half. You could. Can we? I you only need 14 feet. Wouldn't it be better to just go to the zoning board and yeah. get a variance? Ask them to get a variance yeah. for that. Yeah. You probably and are then you could come back here. Mm -hmm. And actually, this is what the, the ZBA would do anyways. My thoughts is, if you can't get a variance for that. What if you attach this property to this one with a right away? You got your 200 feet of frontage here for that. It looks like the other parcels all have 200 feet. And huh? then you could steal 14 feet from here and just yeah. have it right away coming out. Or the prop, the only, that way, the only, you don't need 200 feet on, on the, the block. Only, the only concern, however, is if lot 3 yeah. is non conforming by itself because it doesn't have the acreage. So if you add this 200 feet of frontage, how much of the access road do you have to give the other lot for? No, I'm, what I'm saying is, is that. It doesn't have 200 so feet and 2 acres. May I ask a, a clarifying question? Are you trying to sell lot 1 and lot 3 yes. separately? Yes. Okay, and that's the problem. Right, right. That's the problem. So, so the problem could they be sold together? But the, the <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I, don't, I don't know the specifics on this here. So the problem here is, is lot three is non-conforming by acreage. Lot one is non-conforming by acreage and by the well, extent of the, the, of the, the frontage. Right away through here just put I think the, the idea that Bill has proposed, which is certainly something you can explore, which is basically see if you can find a way to con to combine lot two, which you're keeping in lot four, would then allow you, because then you would have frontage, you've had two frontages, and you could give part of the frontage to lot one, potentially. I'm not saying that that's, it's something to explore is what I'm saying. The problem, however, is, is that it even further decreases your acreage on lot three. Because all you need to do is, is you, need to, you need to interconnect lot four, lot two and lot four. Right. Well. Right. So by, if you look at by combining these two, if you look the at green, this, this and this here, right? If you combine what we that. thought we could do is we could put, in order to make the acreage for this, mm -hmm. we could put a sliver of land all the way down along this edge. All it comes all the way up to here. And it's a sliver. How much to get the acreage? Technically, there's nothing that prevents you from doing so. The, the the question then would be is is do you have enough of a slivers to also give you the the frontage. See, the problem is, is you have you have 200 feet. So here. if we we can't take 14 feet from this one and put it on this one, the only way we that can, you but you don't have the acreage for the total lot. Yeah. It was no, but no, no, hey, hold on. I think I think there's something to be there's something to be done here. You have 
you have this and this. If, if I may, sorry. Yeah, let's stand. If you can combine this with a sliver of land, now you have this interconnected between what is what is in orange and what is in green. Yeah. Right, is now interconnected, and you can make this join these two together. Lot lot two and and lot lot four would be interconnected. It'd and be then, and I'm sorry. It'd be one lot. Exactly, it would right. be one lot. You borrow one and then a pen. By, by the virtue, you can erase it. by How's virtue that? of the fact that you have one lot now, now you have sufficient. You have you but still you still keep your frontage here, and as a matter of fact, what you're doing is is you have frontage here. You have 200 feet of frontage here. You have 200 feet of frontage here. Wow. You can then potentially give a fort, and again, it, you have to dis, uh, look at the somewhere where you can design this here with you. You could grant 14 and a half feet, or whatever number, but it's actually, f uh, whatever number of feet is, to this lot, which at least gives you the frontage. You still don't have the acreage, except for the fact that if you, to your point, this you, is what that looks you like do provide though. this here. Yeah. What if you came it's down? Really that's, crazy. A, that's what we were thinking. Look at the green. I mean, it's really to make, crazy. To make this two acres, yeah. this is what we were thinking. But I'm what we, we are suggesting is, is, what we are suggesting yeah. to you is, is that in addition to this here, to this piece, to yes. this piece of land, what you'd actually do is, is you grant this, uh, you, you basically combine these two. Right. Now, the, and the only question and the only concern would be is, is that you still, yes, you have, two, you have 200 feet here. And two acres. But you have, no, you don't have two acres. You have 1.83 acres. And that's where you will have to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals on this one here. Because yeah. you're just under that. Right. I think you have a better chance, you however. You also do this. Did you? You, you could take your property line and go this way with it and put it over here, the same thing. And the other thing I was thinking of, too, is, which I've done before in the ZBA, been on that board for many, many years, give the frontage here all the way across, because it doesn't matter. You don't need it. You have it over here. Yep. So the 200 feet here doesn't matter. Come down here and get whatever you need for your total two acres, and then have a legal right of way to your property. You, you can do, that, do too. that, too. Yeah. Yeah. So I think there's place there's there's ways to there's ways in which you can work with a wait I need to ask what Bill just said where so how does he get the 200 acres for a lot to the 200 feet he can get the whatever he needs we don't need 200 feet here a legal right away where his access road is would still yeah but I think that's access. the frontage for that lot he doesn't need it if he kind of combines it with this lot this is already got two oh feet. I see what you're saying if he comes over here somehow and attaches which yeah. is no big deal. So yeah. it's all the all way down Bill, here. Bill, that's smart. Yeah. 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 And then what you do is you give that 200 feet to here with a legal right of way to the property. Yeah. Or what you could do is get rid of all of this and put the road over here, put it back here. Yeah. yeah. Could that's it's another way. It's another expensive expensive feature. Yeah. Yeah. But it's another option. Yeah. yeah. You know? But if you combine it here, do you, don't, doesn't your frontage, there are some rules about that. Do you, does your access have to be through your frontage? I don't, I don't know. know the answer to I that. You know, know what I mean? Yeah. Does I your access have, have to be to through your frontage? But his access would be here on a right of way, which is legally allowed. And, and what you're saying? Yeah, but I it's don't somebody know. else's frontage. The frontage to his lot is here. I, I just don't know the answer to that question. But I know there are some rules on okay. if your frontage, that your access has to be through your frontage. I believe. Yeah. I don't know. You know what you need to do is. But again, you if you combine the two together, <laughs> you yeah. actually have 400 <laughs> feet of frontage on no, on this new lot. So what you would do is, is you take yeah. lot w lot two and lot you take lot two, and lot four. You would combine you would combine it, and just by virtue of the fact that you would <coughs> you would create a smaller axis. Now you have 400 feet of frontage, right? And you can still do your sliver on the side. And you can still do your sliver on the side. And that's another option. Yeah. That's probably the best option and yeah, easy to yeah. sell those separately. Right. Yeah. And then just go to zoning for this. E exactly. Correct. And, and front, you have enough looking at you have a big enough water over here. Point yeah, it'd be point one seven that was short, right? Well, you you yeah. you have to you have to work yeah. with somebody who's a right. draftsman and and and, and, yeah. and a land surveyor and, and work but it out with who them. who created did you create lot two with a surveyor in your road? Yes. Who did those plans? All, all of this is was done legally. Bought the whole property, bought it legally. Yeah. Sure, sure. <laughs> but 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 done by whom? 
I will go back. This was all done by, well, I, I had them in my office this morning. Oh. It was all done by New England Environmental okay. Design. Do they have Do they have a good surveying team? Surveying and, yeah, all that. And, and but, they, but they should know the A&R rules. Yeah. yeah. So I, well, we the, can't the, the reason that I wanted to come in was to try to get some ideas as to what we could do. Save some money. You don't want to spend the money. I don't want to spend the money to draw this all out and have it all surveyed yes. to find out that we can't do it. Yeah. You know? But they, but, but, but the experts so, may be better at answering your so, questions. So, so the, the issues that you're confronted with is, is you have at least two non-conforming lots, and the non-conforming on one of them is dual acreage frontage. On the other one, it's uh, acreage. So I think that. You just need to play around with, you, I don't want to with say play, numbers. you have to calculate yeah. how to do the division. You own the everything. Numbers. The question is, is how do you now divvy this up so that by the end, each one of them becomes as conforming as possible? And if not, in my opinion, minimize the mm, amount of interfaces you have to do with the ZBA. Yeah. So if you go there for one lot, only versus going there for two because your chances of having rejection for two is higher than right. for right. one okay i mean this is just a matter of risk and reward mm -hmm. yeah and you I have to determine how that this, works best for you this <coughs> line when you bought it existed though right it was lot two a separate lot when you bought it or did you put it in no okay. all was together they all of it was together yeah. the previous owner bought that whole lot story. one yeah. lot two and lot three is was all one piece of property. Yeah. Lot four was owned by somebody else that we purchased after that fact. Okay, that was the, the folks first. living in the old big house ended up buying all that property up, and they bought the last town house right next door, and you're living in that. So. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, Larry passed away. Oh, he did. Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, almost two years ago. I didn't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a lot of you. You have to be also very cognizant of the fact that there's a lot of square footage that you have to make up. So whatever that sliver is has I, to has to accommodate that. I don't see this doing I don't see doing this. I think that's crazy. But maybe that's just me. Well, I think the planning board might see if they can draw it up. Might do this say. one because this one there is an existing house. That was an original parcel all by itself. You and it know. was an original parcel and it's completely boxed in by yeah. the uh, it's got state DCR land, land, land right, right. All around it. So the only thing they've done with it is they've taken a little corner out of it, right? Or did that line well, we, did this we, we put an access road in between the, the properties. Yeah. And we did that legally by putting the two hundred feet there. Right. Yes. It's a beautiful access too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They might give you this one, but I can't speak for another board. But I do. I am sympathetic because this this one, the house exists. He's not trying to divide it up like it is on this side. Yep. Right. Um, and it does have nearly enough feet, right? And they this is a huge use for us, and he's and it's e unique. Think, it's I boxed think, in. I think the biggest issue with this whole thing is I think the frontage is doable on a variance. I don't think the square footage is. But this one, what do you think? Where it doesn't have any ways else to go? You think the zoning board would? I don't know if we've ever done that before. Because yeah. it's the uniqueness of the parcel, right? Well, we would right? have to take into consideration that everything that the country end does for the town of Huntington. Too. Well, the other thing the board looks at, <laughs> well, yeah. the yeah. other thing the board looks at is they don't want to set precedent. Yeah. No, I understand. Do it, I do. I was I just kidding. In. Right, right. But I'm saying, <laughs> you know, that, and that's one. That's one of the biggest rules that we try to do on. Don't the get me wrong. Goodwill is important because that's oh, why. Is. That's why it's important for us to work with you and trying to come up with a solution. Right. But we also, I have to state this here publicly, from our perspective, we also, as Bill said, we cannot, set, rules, precedent. We cannot set precedent for anybody So we've got to be careful. Yep. So from our yep. perspective, we, we are happy to work with you in trying to come up with what is a fair solution, and a legal one. solution, yep. that does not put the town into a, an issue with precedent. Right. That is our concern here. But yep. the I, other I appreciate the ideas. I, I okay. do. I would... I don't, I don't, I don't know if this is uh, something you may want to do. I, I know there are, there are people in town that have worked on issues such as this here, and you may want to 
approach them and ask them if they have some thoughts or can direct you to the right individuals or people who can help you if they themselves are not able to. I cannot tell you who specifically, but I think you can. We do have a consultant too, and we could run this by Bill. The problem is that we pay Bill for his time. Yeah. My, my point exactly, this is where, yeah. where I was going. You may well, want to. Your guys probably would have a good understanding of this. Yeah, yeah I'm it sure he does. Yeah. yeah. So, sure so, 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 so talking rules, with those rules. right people, they might, and you present this to them. I think that in less than five minutes, they can say you got option A, B, or C. If you want to approach this here, I will work with you, or you can go to this other individual who can help you out. And Again, we're not here to tell you who to go to. And right. ask specifically the issue, which I don't know off the top of my head. We're all lay people. Whether the excess has to be from the frontage. Yes. There are case laws. Is there any it. way you could look into that? Um, I can. Well, I mean, if there's if we took 14 feet of that frontage from from one to put it to the other one to give it there we still have you have to we still have 300 and what 70 well, something feet of frontage you still that's what why I does the why does the access point have to I mean if it's from the frontage really why would it change that could be another variance to look at too <coughs> that aspect because you're still connecting to the other lot so you got plenty of land yeah. You got plenty of frontage over there, so it's different ways of looking at it. I'll, yeah. I'll, I can ask Bill that question. Okay. Bill Murray, our consultant, I'll call you back. Okay. You do have some advantages here, and that is, is you already have 200 feet of frontage for a facility you're not going to give up. Right. You have 200 feet of frontage, so you have a total of 400 feet if those two lots were to be combined. Right. And I think that that is kind of like, that, that's the ace in your pocket that you can look into and see whether or not there's something that is doable there. Again, we yep. cannot guide you there, but I right. think it's certainly something for you to look into. I understand. And if this this one has a house on it though now, right? Lot. The lot four has a house on it. It has a facility it. that they has use a for facility. the facility. But not, not a house. house. Not a house. Not a dwelling. It's basically a bathhouse. Yeah. Well, it's a beach it's house. It, yeah. yeah. And it's got the, the big septic system attached to it. Right. Yeah, how, you could use that frontage how do because get, you combined them. I just don't know do whether you can do it. How do people get from from so. lot two to go to the <coughs> to these to this lot four bathhouse? From lot, they from come here. up here and go around, or they go through do the they have Right, they walk right through the back. You know, and then they drive through here. And they the get more reason top. that if you are thinking that in the future you will continue to use this here as a bathhouse, and you will have these barns here, you may want to think about making sure that there is a form of an access way between the two. Right. Be very okay. expensive. Down in that corner. That'd be expensive. Yeah, you wouldn't yeah. want to. Well, I mean, it just only needs to be a walking path. It doesn't Precisely. have to be. I don't think you really legally have to show, do that because you've got access to the road from here. Right. And that's what they do now. They yeah. drive from that, these buildings. They come up in the summertime. They walk if it's nice yeah. out. But if it's inclement weather, they hold <coughs> on. And then there's a yeah. parking lot right here. Yeah. So okay. it would have to be. It would right. have to be part of that lot, right? If they don't have front of freestanding frontage of its own, it would have to be combined. Correct. Yeah. But it's some doable ideas, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I will. I'll get back to you on the access issue. Okay. And other than that, I do think you need to talk to somebody who's really into subdivision details. Yeah. But our planning board powers are very limited. A and R lots must conform. Yes. And that's how you'd be presenting this. So yeah. we don't have the power to do what you're saying. Okay. Otherwise it's not an A and R. <laughs> <laughs> I completely <laughs> understand. So I don't know whether we've helped, but remind me to call Bill. Yeah. There may be some exceptions or I know there's case law on it. I just don't know how the case law came out. Okay. Thank you. Well I'll get him to try to redraw this back up again. Yeah, and, come and back. And then I'll come back. Come back you with him. I mean? yep. Yeah, if come he'll back come. With the person and, and we'll put you on first so you're not paying too much time for somebody to sit there. Yeah. yeah. That that would probably be the cheapest way to go. You know Julian? You know I Julian? Know Julian. Yeah. I know Is he name. clever? We need a clever person. <laughs> well, I don't want to say he's not clever. We're being reported. I don't know. I've worked with quite a bit. Yeah. And we've worked with quite a few surveyors, but they should be able to do it. People that are used to subdivision issues. I think a lot of times you put the ideas out there, it gets the wheels going. A lot of people come up with great ideas. So. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. I appreciate Sorry, your time. Thank you very much. much. I wouldn't say okay, but have a great night. it's better than having you spend a lot of money and going in the wrong direction. So. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. So. Good night.
Okay, third person, also an informal meeting, also interesting. Right. Next Question. door neighbor to Bob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is Mary Must Bellotti. Be something in the water. That's right. <laughs> but, this, but what she's coming about doesn't involve the church. No, it doesn't. No. So it involves... Uh, acre lot yeah, off which, Road, Maple Lane. which you can, yeah, come up and join us at the table. So I put, I did a little research on this so you guys could see it. So I hope you looked at your I documents. I brought some papers yeah. too. So this is, yeah, that's the lot. That's the same one I have here, Thanks, right? Yeah. But there was also Oops, the sorry. subdivision that was done. Is there wh what else is in that besides that? Um, the subdivision and just is in a couple there. Okay. Of maps. Okay, yeah. so you're you I'll take yours. The, we're all the, looking at the same thing. The, the covenant and the paperwork that was attached to for oh, you from have his more original. Stuff? And then I, I blew up the um <laughs> it was impossible to read the Those one, you shouldn't use the in original public plan. Anymore. <laughs> What's blew that? Yeah, I could <laughs> I know, I blew it up. I that's not a good word, I guess. But this one, one of the original plan that he development that he had submitted was hard to read. Uh -huh. <laughs> really. Who was that? Um, it was Chris Begley. Who still owns this lot? He does. Okay. So, so my issue is that my husband and I are considering purchasing the land, but um, we want to be sure that we can <laughs> build on it and do some things with it that we'd like to do um, before we go ahead and make an offer. Um, we need to kind of have an idea of what we might have to put into the property for finances and so thi this this one you have copies of too yeah where is it no the total yeah. lot area is almost 80 acres 79 it is plus, right yeah. and here's the frontage it looks like it goes down the front of lot one yeah here's yeah. the pr look at this look at the subdivision one okay. though because that's important so this maple lane if you look at this this is actually joe how do you spell his name? Fournier. Fournier's lot. Fournier. Fournier. Yes. So Not his one. his frontage is on Williamsville, right? Mm -hmm. So this road doesn't isn't an accepted road in the town of Pugs. It hasn't been done yet. So <coughs> it was never and, finished. It was never finished, right? And well, it means it was never accepted. So if you look at and then you look at this lot, you can see uh, Mary and the board that all. The, um, what's the guy here, guy that know? Chris Begley. Begley. Chris Begley mm -hmm. did was, he sold the lot, this lot, 147. Is a 140, yeah, 147 is a group home. Mm -hmm. So he Seven sold house. it to the group home, and I don't know how he did that without really putting in the road, but they must have given him an exception or something. Do we know the history of that? I don't know, but because in theory, you, you can't Would sell lots a in a subdivision until you Right, but his frontage is he was going to be on this cul-de-sac, which he didn't build. Right. So my issue with Mary was, because I talk, we talked about this, and then I thought I shouldn't just opine, I need to talk to you guys. Right. Is that she would have to put in, because if you buy it, you, you step into the shoes of the guy who owns it. So now it's your obligation to build a cul-de-sac, right? So if you build this road, first of all, it's pretty expensive, even a minor road, to put it in up to standard, right? And then if you put a cul-de-sac in the end, that would give her the frontage. Right, right, which is I don't I can't read this plan, but I yeah, assume that's why that I blew it up because it's. Um, you, can you see what yeah, the frontage on the cul-de-sac is? Two seventy-six something. That would oh, be the blow up. Oh, okay. Can you? I think I am reading two hundred seventy-six <laughs> right there. <laughs> okay, two hundred. Against two hundred sixty-three here. Two hundred seventy. Okay, so she would have here uh, frontage. Her frontage would be the cul-de-sac loop, right? My question is, how did the group home get frontage? There is none. The croup homes frontage is the other side of the cul-de-sac, but he never put in the so cul-de-sac. There's no frontage. They could they couldn't put the building up without. I, so I, I don't know how he got a permit. When did this? Uh, yeah. when, did, when was this built? This. It was back in eighty. This proposal was back in what eighty nine or the something like that. Is, yeah, the plan is yeah dated nineteen eighty nine. I don't know. Eighty nine. So one forty seven was built in eighty nine. What's the number of the home? The group home? The group home is Seven Hills. Um, I don't know yeah, Seven know. Hills. It, Seven I know it was built, well, the plan is 89. The subdivision plan was 89. So for some reason, they let him use a right of way, maybe because they said, well, as long as it's just one property there, 
Or maybe there was a house there they tore down or a pre-existing structure or something. But this is a subdivision plan. Yeah, he divided it, yeah. So you need to put in, I mean, and I don't know, the frontage now we require, you have the two, your frontage becomes this cul-de-sac. It isn't here on the road. It's the front. It's the cul-de-sac, right? Does anybody own 103 and 146? Um, 146 is owned by Joseph Schoenier. Yeah, there's a house there. And this prop, but this property was part of the subdivision, correct? Do you remember, Christina? Yes, that yes. the back of one. So nobody owns, owns this. It's still Absolutely. part of your land, oh, right? Okay. It was, um, it was part of the subdivision, but it's part of what they own. Right next door. This is also they, difficult. If you look at the yellow they're, one, you'll see it's yeah. That's, that's yeah. yeah. If you look at the yellow one, so this, so one. Bill, this isn't separated out. This is still part of it, the well, subdivision. It isn't under separate ownership. It's part of the yellow parcel. I'm, I'm sorry. But still, what's, what's in front of it on Williamsville Road? There's only the one. Look at the white, look at the yellow thing. Yeah. The only lot here on Williamsville is, say his name again for me, I'm good bad at French. Joe, Joe, Joe Chonier. <laughs> Joe Chonier, he's the only lot, and his frontage is on Williamsville. On 147? No, 174 uh, is the group home. The, right. the parcel that's 146 that's is Joe's. This, one, this is the group home, this little sliver. Right. One and this is Joe's. So this parcel has no frontage. Unless she builds a right. subdivision. But you're saying this is a mean group the home on 147, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do they get their frontage for that lot? I'm trying to find anything in the registry. Oh, their frontage bill. They have different numbers. Their frontage has yeah, to have been this cul de sac. So the cul de sac's yeah. already approved. Yeah. Yeah. It's been this approved. This one. is approved, but it was so never built. <laughs> with the other numbers. Oh, the group <laughs> home was never built? No, the group home was built, but the cul de sac was never installed. So what you have there, I was, I drove there the other day. So I end up coming up here. And what this is this is not a cul-de-sac this is just an open no, area it's right. the okay. dash line that's what it is yeah. they let him put a driveway cor instead of a cul-de-sac correct then. correct so you do not have a cul-de-sac what you have is, is basically a drive where you come up there you see a house and you say oh this must belong mm -hmm. to these people who live there right. but there is no cul-de-sac there right but if you see with the subdivision plan there was supposed to be this cul-de-sac put in, and the group home would have frontage on the cul-de-sac, and then the remaining back land Precisely. would have frontage. Precisely. Right? So they made this their driveway for the group home, and that's yeah. how they got Well, the actually, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt here, but there is there is a there is pavement on Maple Lane up to a certain uh -huh. certain many feet because where Joseph lives. Mm -hmm. Uh, he actually has his entrance going up Maple Lane. Okay. Yes, his frontage, and he is quote unquote a Williamsville resident, road re resident. Right, right. But but in order to get into his house, you actually have to go up that small yes, little that's maple ma okay. Maple Lane, his take a left, well. and then hit that, that's where his driveway quote unquote is. But Maple Lane is not listed on the approved road list, so it's another right. North Comet Pond. So the allowed and illegal road then. Technically, or they, they well, allowed. I guess he was supposed to finish it, but he just but never did. They allowed well, houses to be built on a road that wasn't a town approved road. So yeah. here's here's That's my question for the group: Is if you assume that Maple Lane exists to where they the cross is, right? And we have this rule that a dead end road can't be more than 500 feet, right? So is it 500 feet from where the paved part of Maple Road ends, or is it, which would at least give her, then she could in theory, put a second cul-de-sac or do something? Or would the 500 feet be all the way from Williamsville, in which case she would never be able to do anything but put the cul-de-sac in? Right, because if you go all the way to Williamsville, it's 400 and something feet. But yep. if you go from the pavement, it's probably less. So actually, what we'd like to do is go into the property further with a road if we were to actually pay for a road to go in so that we could split the property um, at some point. Right. Um, because obviously my husband and I just, I just retired. He's been retired from the city for a while and we're moving out here. And mm -hmm. But we certainly don't need um, 79 acres, but we <laughs> love the property. Yeah. And we want to be able to use some of the property for a trip. Let me out, I'm um, stuck whoa. in your pocket. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I just shut all of that. 
Is that the kids? <laughs> Grandkids? When I first got this phone, everybody <laughs> had the same phone, the same notifications and ring. So I put um, <laughs> the theme to Halloween oh. show, and then I put my kids heard that notification. Oh, that's been so on there funny. Since. That's funny. So um, may, may I ask for clarifying? So <laughs> this lot here, which is all of this here? All this owns by Joe. Joe owns, owns it all. Joe. And so the question would be is, is where, I mean, if, first of all, the first question I have is, is I know that there, this yeah. is paved here. I don't know as to whether or not this is considered to be, if Maple Lane is considered to be a, a town road, if you say it's, it's not. It's not. It's not on the there, list of if it's 50 not, or 90 it, roads. It, if it's not, then the, the next question would be is, is, is it considered to be, a, is it considered to be a private road right now or what is it? That's what I would say. It's not on this the is town where road. I, we all, you know, this is in that, this is that issue which comes yeah. up again and again and yeah. again. So if it's not an accepted road, I guess it would be. It's a private road. Well, right? private roads get accepted too. It's a recognized road, but um, it would you know you'd have to go through that same so road. Was it in existence prior to subdivision? But no. You'd have to go so through that analysis. So my, qu my my question really stems from the fact that I see this line here. Is this is this their lot for for 147? There, no. Um, Yes, this is the Group Homes Foundation. Yes, but I, my my question is is where where does where does their property in theory in in reality? Yeah. This is their lot, and he's got a right of way to finish the cul-de-sac. Okay, so he's the got a right so, through it. so so this this is their boundary of their lot here. No, Correct. the red is the boundary of their lot, subject to the right of way. And so it'd be easier to look at on this for you. Have oh, it is. Okay, yeah, you're, so right, you're right. You're so right. You're right. It is right. here. Right, you're so right. for all intents and purposes, for all intents and purposes, this is where their lot finishes <laughs> and then goes around. That's their right? frontage. Right? Or it gets the other lot. Like yeah. So the question would be Oops, is, 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 is what do we do here? In That's theory, then the question would be is, is how can we make sure that whatever you build there? So the quandary here is, is you, you you do not have road frontage. Right. Right. And so. I think the very first thing that has to be made happen here is is potentially the group home, yourselves, and maybe Joe, have to figure out a way to make this uh, a road, a public road, which is really expensive. Yes. You've got to bring it up to Chapter 90 code, right? Or uh, the other question would be is is keep it as a private road, and then the question would be is is can can we can it be introduced as a private road? Can we make that investigation as to whether or not it could be considered to be a private road, like the Comet Pond roads that we have? The difference with the Comet Pond road was that we weren't looking to extend the road, right? No, there, and and, well, and we're not extending it either. This is in existence already. I think. I think the difference between what you're talking about here is the fact those were done way before zoning. Yeah, this is this is a subdivision. I mean, I, I don't have the answer, but I do think that we've had other private roads and we've had arguments with them. And there is there is a way with A&R plans, if the road existed way back before subdivision, before 59, people, and there's a finding that it's of adequate uh, construction yep. and for fire access and everything else turn around that, for you, fire trucks and so forth. that you could you that it could be considered a road but I don't think it's come before us where somebody then wants to add on to the end of that road right. it, it comes before us with you have a big lot and you want to divide it mm -hmm. on that road or a house burns down and you want a building permit to rebuild it mm -hmm. so I'm I mean that my opinion is that you'd have to put in the cul-de-sac in order to do anything with that house and yes. then it's very limited because because of our 500 foot dead-end road Depending situation. If they make it into a cul-de-sac and it's on a dead-end road. Yes, but it's only allowed to be 500 feet long. No, a cul-de-sac, even a loop road isn't allowed under our zoning bylaws. So if she were to run a road in and loop it around and come back. Well, I'm saying a cul-de-sac, we have that in other places in town. But, but look, if you look at our subdivision rules, yeah. it says no, a, a, a cul-de-sac is considered a dead-end road. It's just a dead-end road with a turnaround. All the ones that were done before, they got accepted and are okay? Well, it doesn't exist, though. Oh, oh I mean, if there was a dead-end road before? I don't yeah. know the answer to that. Whether the you dock would have uh, cul-de-sacs. 
there, we have cul-de-sacs must that are longer than that. The roads, if the road exists and you put a cul-de-sac off it, yeah, then it's only the length of you can go 500 uh, okay. feet in with the cul-de-sac. Okay. Yeah, so the right. question is, we from here, <coughs> do you consider this road having existed so she gets 500 feet from here? Okay, which would allow her to go in a little further, maybe to bring the road up a little further and put a cul-de-sac in, which might give you two or three house lots. It'd be a big right. difference, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of, but in the future, that's probably what we would like to do. I mean, it wouldn't be something immediate because right now our goal would be to set up a, a little house for my husband and I and, and get settled. But, Mary, you'd have to but put um, in the, the cul-de-sac anyway, though. Right, right. But because what, that's what their front is your front Like, um, I know everyone says it's expensive, and I understand that, um, but are we talking 20,000, 50,000, 100,000? <laughs> like, because I haven't right. made an offer. We did make an offer, he counter offered. Um, we haven't gone back to him yet because I don't know what kind of money we're talking about that I would need to invest. Mm -hmm. And that would make a difference on what we offer, obviously. Um, so that's what I was kind of trying to get. In. I, I, and I know you can't say, yeah, this is what it's gonna cost. But if I can get a ball game or, or a general idea of what um, you're talking about per feet for a road. Um, I know in the city, you know, we just had a little piece of property next to us that we just sold and it needed to have an extension for the street. And so we were able to tell them it's this amount per feet that's gonna cost to put this road in. Um, so I don't know if you have that kind of... Um, we, uh, we don't. We do not we have that yeah. information. Yeah. But you could take this plan to a paver person and said, you know, the whole, it's, so this shows two things. It shows the right of way, which is wider, and then the amount that needs to be paved. And the amount that needs to be paved, and what's a minor world we, take your blow up and they can see it. Mm -hmm. And it would have to be built because I think you're grandfathered with the plan. So I think that even if um, the frontage was increased or the road width was, that this would govern, I think. And at least it would do for estimate purposes. But it's gonna be expensive because a cul-de-sac is big. It's a whole turnaround. And it, it can't be gravel. It doesn't have to be paved. It has to be paved. But the again, only like what kind of cost are you thinking? Like no idea. idea. This, is, this is not our department of no. understanding. Yeah, we, I, I don't know. apologize, but it's just not something we have. I just know that's, what, that's, a, that's the requirement, though. Mm -hmm. If he had made the cul-de-sac from the beginning and Made it official. Because it was supposed to be. Right. Which it's been a different uh, story. It appears, I mean, this, I, I see these maps here. They're from 1989. Right. Right. So that's uh, 32 years ago. Mm -hmm. Our issue is that, you know, my my bank, we ha we're already pre approved for a land loan. However, they need something from the town that says it's right. a buildable lot, obviously. Um, or that we're not going to be able to get a land loan. So we can't make an offer and, and go back and forth with him unless we know right. def definitively that we're going to be able to build um, yeah. I would property. definitely go yeah. to somebody. Oh, I'm sorry. Go say, go ahead, Bill. I would just go to somebody and have them give you uh, an estimate so you, you have an idea what kind of money. Uh, and then go back and make a counter offer because he never did that. So the other, question, the other question you may raise is with the people who live on lot 170, 147, I think it is, we were saying earlier. Mm -hmm. The group home? Yeah. The group yeah. home? 147. 147. As to their, their interest in making this the right way. Mm -hmm. And see whether or not they are also interested in. Oh, there you go. That's an idea. In, in, in working jointly with you and, and putting a proper cul-de-sac in here. That means that you could potentially share the cost, which I think makes a lot more sense because it's yes. not something that would only benefit you, but would benefit them. And also the the first house on the left, where they have their driveway after that. No, that they're they're uh, Joe is Joe's property. Joe probably owns this. Yeah, he's totally unaffected by that. Mm -hmm. right. But I he's think the people who live in the group home are the right people for you to potentially approach. And that's absolutely your choice as to whether or not you want to do that or not. <coughs> and see whether or not they are interested in working with you on coming up with some form of a, an agreement. Now and I would certainly do that before you, you know, before you make any kind of final mm -hmm. decision regarding 
to purchase or not. I mean, that's your choice, but. Now, I to actually finish the cul-de-sac there, would that then make it a legal street? No. That yep. There's still other processes that you would have to follow in order to make that a, a, a town, legal town road slash but street. But you, you come and have it accepted, and if it's built up to code, yes. which this requires, the town would accept it. I think they have yeah. to if it's up to code, right? If it is up to code, I believe, then at that yes. point in time, it doesn't have to be voted yeah. though? It has to be voted at the town meeting. It has to be voted at the town meeting, and the it's next town meeting is not until... June. So, well, no, no, there's, there's, no, there's an October or November, time. and then there's another one in the in the uh, late spring, in the June time frame. I do think what happened. That's what happened with Streeter Road. Streeter right. Road yep. was uh, considered a private road, and they went back and forth, and they finally got it accepted. This so is a very small road, and I mean, in comparison to Streeter Road, Streeter Road was much, much larger. But that was a fight too. You're going to have to if you bring it up to standard, they'll accept it, but they're yeah. not going to accept it the yeah. way it is. Yeah. No, and I, I think the reason this was, I don't know why the exception was made, but I think the reason was because there was only one property that was going to be there, so they mm -hmm. allowed him to get away with the driveway. But they oh. said if you want to subdivide it, you got to put in a cul-de-sac. That's my guess. Mm -hmm. You can also talk to the um, building inspector. But, but um, he's, so we're usually fighting with him. But this would still only give us um, one lot. One lot. It wouldn't be allow us. Is there any um, potential that you can see that might be able to? Not, not this way. You know, go but in. What would really be is if you, if any of these lots came for sale, so you could get frontage on the other side. We'll you make could the put a road big it. enough so you have 200 feet of frontage for the, the back half of your lot and the front half of the lot. You have to make that cul de sac bigger. Or you could put a road through if they bought right. to buy one of these lots. Yeah. So so lots but lots 40. You know, lots 39, lots, I don't know what the frontage is in 40A or 41 or any of those lots. Those are lots that. You have to have some sort of, you got to have frontage on a town road, total of 200 feet and two acres of land. Right. But if you could buy one of those lots that just had less than the frontage, you'd at least, that was at least wide enough for a road, then you could put a road through the whole thing. Yeah. And it, there are other communities like, I, I, in Princeton, they have back lot subdivisions for situations like this, mm -hmm. but we don't have that. Right. Not in Hubbardson. There's it's a lot of bylaws. Land in it's not. Yeah, it's a special bylaw there where they allow it to go up. And you know, the catch twenty two is that the town doesn't want to take on more roads that aren't up to grade. They have to plow them. They have to provide fire. It's not safe to people to do that. So we just yeah. have these rules subdivision. Well, we're almost to the but point. All of them are town approved roads now. Yeah. We, mm -hmm. had, we had a lot of roads that weren't. There's and a few we, more left, but. And there's the cost involved, obviously, in repaving them every so so often. It's not upkeep. just the up, upkeep and maintenance of the day, the, of the yearly uh, weather conditions, but also the, the upkeep on a more long-term mm -hmm. situation. But the every trouble five, is. five, 10 years, you have to potentially repave or do some other work. Is this a railroad crossing, a railroad that runs through? No. There's three streams. Or what are the hash marks here? Just a stream? Stream. That's the stream. Oh, okay, stream. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think that I have somewhat sympathetic with a multi, with a back lot kind of thing like that, like Princeton's done. Yeah. I think because there's, an, there's this shows up in town a lot, with fairly big lots with no access. Right, right. But, yeah. but it doesn't exist at the moment. There's another other one, Grail Street, there's like 60 acres down there that it only has a right of way. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have any frontage. Right. Is there a possibility that um, they would um, approve for the one lot for now without make up doing doing the road? I mean, doing the the cul-de-sac. You can talk to Roland. Mm -hmm. um, he's our building inspector. If yep. you can get a building permit out of him, you don't need to come to planning board. Correct. But I think it's unlikely. Personally, I think it's unlikely. And I don't think you can go. To, you can't go to the ZB. No. My, uh, so the first thing would be to go to the building inspector and say, look, this is, this is what we have. Yeah. Can I build? And he will, uh, he will tell you whether or not you can face The building inspector does? Okay. So yes, because what he, will, what, he what he will do is, is he, will look, he will look at the plans and he will make a decision based on the facts of what you have there currently. Mm -hmm. And he will tell you what you poten potentially will tell you what you need to have in place or why if he says no, this he has to give you the re he should be giving you the reasons why not, 
and then you work from there to get the things need that are necessary to bring you up to mm -hmm. the standards that are required. And uh -huh. that at least gives you sort of a starting point. Yeah, that, I guess that's what I need because I really am new at this and I don't know what to ask, who to ask. Yeah. I um, think he's going to say you got to put in a call you know. Yes, so but, I, but it that, would be the building inspector but first. But I think it's I think it's really good for the building inspector to come back and provide that that initial guidance, right? Yeah. So what I have is a called the zoning determination request form, um, and I have a blank copy right here. So I'm going to email that to you right now. Just get that filled out and provide all your supporting documents, and then mm -hmm. you can email it back to me, okay. um, and I will get it over to Roland for you. Okay. All right. You want to keep one of these sets okay. to yeah. give to him? He does everything digital, so if you have them digital, mm -hmm. Mary, yeah. let's keep them. We don't, might not want to take them on. Again, we have also really limited powers as a planning board. We we got to work within the framework we have. So, right. no to build, bring it up to code. Does that mean installing um, pavement, gravel, digging? Yeah, doing the whole grading and the drainage. I think, it, drainage I think you're talking about a couple stuff. hundred thousand dollars, mm -hmm. well, at least. I have no idea the cost of this much a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was trying to find out. Like, what kind of cost are we talking about? Yeah. You know, and the only way you can do it is yeah. have, have somebody that does that kind of work officially and then say, all right, unofficially, this is what I propose what it might cost you. And they haven't even looked at it yet because mm -hmm. you don't, you got to find it in the ground. Mm -hmm. So it's, right. you don't know. Yeah. And, you know, it's hard to jump in and spend a lot of money before we even get denied. Yeah. Yeah, sure. you don't want to no. do that. Yeah. Well, That's why I think it's not a bad idea to uh, work with the uh, building inspector right from the beginning. He can tell you yes, no, and if it's no, if it's yes, it's great. But if it's no, he can tell you the reason I'm saying no is this, this, and this. Okay. Now you have something to work with. Well, that's good. Yeah, that, that's helpful. Cause okay. I, poor Bill. I <laughs> I asked him earlier on, and and because I, I just didn't, I had no clue where to go from here, you know. And be the problem is the access. I'm just surprised they let him do that back in '89. So yeah, I don't know. When did, when did that go up? Yeah, '89. '89. Yeah. Probably because oh, there was it would, you know, they thought, well, we're not creating a subdivision. You can lot with 20 feet of frontage. You know exactly. It was mm -hmm. just one lot, so yeah. I don't know who he talked into it's getting it, but and it was a group home and it was There's a good a cause. Lot of but when but we get permits, that's not how it comes through for those. But a lot of people stuff. don't, how does, how does don't we don't even know. We yeah, can't know. Oh, oh. Yeah. So wait a minute. How do you so it, when you turn into a it, Wait. It's literally 20 feet. I'm sorry. So she has a point of order. In, oh, I'm sorry. Actually, Chris may know this, too, because he we, works with nonprofits. But yeah, when we get permits for a nonprofit, we don't know it's for a nonprofit. Um, for a group home or anything like that, it strictly comes through as a building permit. Okay. Um, so that never has any determination on zoning. It it's either has to be compliant or it's non-compliant okay. with the ZBA. Um, so we have no idea. That has nothing to do with. Is that always been the case, or uh, is it something that's been more recent? It should always be the case. It's can you can you ask Roland for us if he knows why that would have been approved? Sure. And it may be because it was approved they're willing to recognize that road, and that would help her a lot. Then she'd only have to pay from the cul-de-sac. She wouldn't right. have to put the road in. Yeah. But you talk to him <coughs> and put it in. He's got to make that decision, but that should be pointed out to him. Okay. Then you can arrange me to, to meet with him. Yeah, uh, I'll ask him to come in. Um, okay. And maybe we can do a face-to-face. -face. He hasn't done any since COVID. I appreciate all your help. Okay, I know well, I'm not, not at all. That. Totally I know concrete. I'm not very, you know, versed. No, you're, <laughs> no, you have a lot of together. You have a lot of good material here. As a yes. matter of fact, if it yeah, weren't for the fact that we had these design, these drawings, I think it would have been much, much more difficult for us to interpret this here. But again, I think the important thing here is, is for you to understand and note is, is a as the planning board, we cannot tell you how much the cost is. That is something that right. professional will have no, to we give can you. Never get. But I think that instead of jumping into that area first, you really need to know what you need to do in order to build your home. Right. And that means that you have to go to the building inspector. The building inspector is the one who's going to tell you yes or no right off the bat. And right. again, once you know why the no is, then you have and very concrete like things, then you have very concrete things that you need to Look address. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's black and white. That's helpful. Thank you very much. Thank I appreciate it so much. Thank You're you. very welcome. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Okay. I, I want wish we to could be more helpful. <laughs> <laughs> I know, two people in a row. 
that we really Can can't solve the problems. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I sent it from the planning board email, so if you don't get it, just let me know, okay? Okay. Thanks, Mallory. You're Appreciate welcome. it, honey. Have Thanks. a great night. Thank you. You too. Thanks. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a, uh, there we go. Yeah. That one stays oh, here. Is that ours? That's oh, ours. Oh, that's ours. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I'm walking off with it. That, the other one there, too. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh a whole stack, stack, huh? <laughs> hey. Yeah. Good night. Okay, the, the next item on our agenda was the MRPC presentation from Jonathan Voss, and we got a call this afternoon, an email, actually. He sent us an email saying um, that his co-worker came down with COVID. Oh, my God. And he was exposed. Potentially. It, oh, potentially. He, was exposed. he yeah. was exposed. And actually, Jonathan Voss has a vaccine. So I said, can I come or can I come? And uh, Mallory says the, no. the verdict on that situation is you cannot come. No. Okay. So he is not here, which is just as well, considering the time. He could have Zoomed. Well, he's also <laughs> scheduled for another Zoom at 630 tonight, too. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. I was only so, kidding. Uh, <laughs> we, were trying to, we were trying to help him out, but it just didn't happen tonight. So, okay. so um, next thing is... The error. The error. So the error. So the here's error. what happened with the error. The, the zoning error. bylaws passed in October of 1989, and at that time, the commercial zone again. went yeah. all the way from the end of the town well. center zone, there by the fields, playing fields, all the way up to Pitcherville. And then, in 1991, so two years later, the bylaw rezoned it to shrink back the commercial zone to end at Ragged Hill Road. So everything going north, all being residential again. And that was put into our zoning uh, bylaw, okay? And then in 1992, a year later, they amended the map again, and they sort of split the cake. It's the map that now exists, and which mm -hmm. has existed since 1992, that ends the commercial zone at um, the where the Commonwealth of Mass land is. Gardner Cutoff Road. Right, right by the north end of the cutoff road, right? Mm -hmm. Of Gardner Road. But the, but the zoning bylaw was never fixed to match that. <laughs> so, um, so I read this and I thought, what the heck? Because all of, uh, you know, the 69 Gardner Road is in that. The I said, what, what have we been doing here? So I, I really went back, I checked it all. It's just a matter that nobody ever fixed it, all right? Who caught and this? Hmm? Who caught this? I did. You and it's it? a heart failure. <laughs> because I thought, <laughs> what if it's right? I'm glad you but it's clearly yeah. a clerical error. It is clearly a clerical error. And the proof of that is you can look at these zoning bylaws, you know, we were given way back when, and even that map has the fix, mm -hmm. right? And it's stated. It just stated, wasn't done in here. It just wasn't done in here. I hope so Todd is caught up with CPR and <laughs> you can imagine. You can imagine. They're like, oh my. Anyway, so what we need to do, if you flip to this suggestion, yeah. is is to cross out the the is. And we can do this as a clerical fix because we know it's a clerical error. Is um, is we need to ha strike the language, all land currently designated within the light industrial district, which is what they called yeah. it, located on the east side of Gardner Road between High Street, High Street and Morgan and on the west side between Gardner Road and Ragged Hill shall be amended residential agriculture, right? We need to take that out. Yep. And this would leave us with, then we need to tweak the language just a tiny bit. So, so it would read the official map, which is how it was, so it's not, now it says the official zoning map entitled zoning districts, which was prepared by IEP Inc. in 1988 is hereby made part of the zoning bylaws and shall be on file with the town clerk. So we just need to change that, I think, to say the official zoning map originally entitled Zoning Districts prepared by IEP Inc. 1988, as may be amended, is hereby made part of the zoning bylaws and shall be on file with the town clerk. And then the footnote needs to be corrected to say it was, in fact, amended in December 1992, uh, um, amended in 62491, December, which December. 1992, and then revised and digitized, which is gets us to access GIS mm -hmm. in 2001. So, um, I make that motion. Can I ask a, a, yeah. a clarifying question before you make the motion? Yeah. Where it says amended 624, that was the town meeting, and then the December 1992 is what? So I'm confused. Th this 
The eight, 89 was when they passed the bylaw. 91 was which, amended. Which, which included it all the way residential. Okay. 91, they amended it to shrink back. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I have, to go, I have right. to go back. <laughs> the map was amended. Okay, I'm going to go through this again. The bylaw passed in 89. The map was amended in 91, the mm -hmm. map, to rezone 68 from Ragged Hill to Pitcherville, all residential. Mm -hmm. And then in 92, it was amended again to the status it is today. Okay, so I think we need to just make sure that the amendment clarifies that what is in December 1992 is that second piece, right? Correct. So I think we need to have two, we should have two sub, uh, not sub bullets, but two footnotes. Okay, we could, well. Because yeah, there's two amendments. There's an amendment in 1991, and then there is a, there, there's there's a there's a change that also took place in 1992. Right? I think though the, the trouble is that the footnotes are kind. I mean maybe a footnote A eight or something. I don't know how you do that because Why footnote don't we have nine to is the next. Because the last this footnote would go with the, the last change, correct? Mm -hmm. No, you have to put in all the changes, right? No. Other other bylaws have I a, a series I of changes. Correct. Audible. They have them okay. one after the other. Yeah. Okay. So, so we, we could, could maybe list them underneath each other. Pre precisely. You can have a footnote, and then you can simply have yeah, one two. after the other. That way just we understand that they were so two all, separate. All, all under eight. So all under eight, but there's, an, there's, there's an amendment uh, on amended, such a date, okay. and there's another amendment. Put amended before each. Exactly. Now, okay. should we also make mention that it was changed today by the board because because it was, a, was a correction of a clerical meeting. error. Correct. That should be, that should be uh, listed too, oh, right? So, okay, just say clerical error corrected is a third line in the footnote. By yes. the board. Just keeps the and history correct and, and up to date. You spell clerical, C L A R. Yeah, okay. Oh, error. Yeah. Corrected in today's date. All right, so Mallory would read amended 62491. Amended December 1992, and then underneath that, revised and digitized 2011. Yeah, it didn't actually change zones, but it did revise it because it put a lot of information on that hadn't existed. Okay. Right. So revised and digitized in 2011, and then you'll put clerical error, and then the fourth line under clerical error corrected on today's date if we do it okay. today. Okay. So. The motion would be to correct the clerical error in Article 3, Section 3.2 of the Town and Hoverton Zoning Bylaws caused by a failure to reflect zoning change made in 1992 and shown on zoning maps dated 1992 and subsequent, and the subsequent current and the current zoning map dated 2011, so that the section reads zoning map with footnote 8. The official zoning map originally entitled Zoning District prepared by IEP Inc. 1988 as may be amended is hereby made part of these zoning bylaws and shall be on file with the clerk. And then the footnote 8 would amended 624-1991, amended December 1992, revised and digitized 2011 and clerical error corrected with today's date. So. I'll make that motion. I'm not going to reset. Yeah. Okay. Mallory <laughs> <laughs> has it all, right? You got it down. Yeah, it's on camera. Too. Okay. I second the motion. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. Hearing now, I'll proceed to vote. Lived all aye. Steiger, aye. Holman's aye. Gunner, aye. Okay. Great. Thanks, guys. You can't Thanks believe how long it took for me to figure that out. Take an aspirin now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, take two. I was going to say, take two. This is just, just an impossible night, you know? It's telling people we can't do stuff, we have to fix them. Ugh. And now we come to 55 Old Boston Turnpike, which was, now the Dakotas, did you talk to them about coming? No, I oh. called, but I did not get a return. Okay, so I thought a lot about this and we've done a lot of research on this. So the, the story with this is, there was a special permit that was granted back in December, 2009 was that in the documents yeah okay for Cindy Phillips but it was never it went to court I don't know what happened with the court case but it was never recorded 
And there's an absolute black and white law under um, Massachusetts General Law 40A, section, section 11, paragraph, I think, 7, which I have here, which says that um, a special permit does not take effect. Here it is, yeah, paragraph 7. This law came Unless to it's recorded in the registry of deeds. Which it never was over which 12 it, years ago. Yeah, it wasn't. So, in addition to that, um, she's got a. So, I don't think we can revoke it because it never existed. It but never is there was an valid. Is this there has come to the Zoning Board of Appeals quite a few times. This has also come to the local law enforcement n numerous times on the complaints. A lot of people have been involved with these complaints. May I ask? Uh, Wait, the complaints about the unrecorded permits? The dogs. Or the these problems, dogs. Yeah, the, dogs. the complaints uh, get brought up numerous times. Mm -hmm. well, well, we had, most recently, we had a gentleman who was a relative. David. Right. So it was actually, so well, here's what David Dakota said. David, this is family land. David Dakota is the trustee of the trust that actually owns this parcel of land. And this was way back in the court records that Mallory found. And the, that he said, I never consented as the owner of this land for that to be put there. And, you know, our zoning special permits, because this has come up, you can't just go, it came up last year when somebody was going to put a marijuana farm on Mary's, you know, and you say, you can't do that. You have to have the, you don't have to own the lot with a special permit on it, but you do have, the owner has to sign off. Which he did not. Which, which he did not, okay? So we don't have a, a special permit, and it's really very black and white in all of the, like, the guidebooks. It has to be recorded to be effective. So I wrote a letter, which is in your package, to try to fire up another a group of people that are responsible because we don't have enforcement power, right? So this is this very detailed letter to town officials that I wrote. And I said, please, can we put together an enforcement committee, which we did once, what do we call that? 248 Gardner Road. 248, 248, where we all met. We had a, it was during COVID, a big Zoom session. And we had an action plan. We were going to go out there together. We were going to inspect which wound up, and that's also on the agenda, because, <laughs> but anyway, finally, so I, I will do what you want to do, but I thought, my original conception was we revoke the permit, and we would invite the neighbors to come in as well as Dakota, you'd send the, you know, like you would a, to get a special permit, right, you'd have a hearing, mm -hmm. but we don't have a special permit that's in effect, and I don't want to concede that point, can because, I make, can I make a quick question, sure. uh, ask you a quick question? Is, is, is the special permit, the fact that it, it, it was never recorded, does it therefore expire? And so there's no way that the person or persons to whom that special permit was granted to at that point in time can turn around and say, well, we are going to record this at this point in time. Correct. Well, first, my opinion, it was never approved. So it's like yeah. if I started building a house and I never got approval. Can we Bottom line is it, it was never in effect. Can you send a letter that says? Well, wait a minute. The special permit was, I, there's a signature on that special permit, and if you would be so kind, just indicate who signed that. It was an illegal special permit, put it that way. Well, that's, it was, that's a, that's it a, was, it, yeah. I think it was, what happened was, you know, there's an appeal period, right, before they can. So we have. So this was signed by the clerk, dated, and then it was appealed to court, but, I believe. So this is, this is the special permit, right? Yes. And the special permit was signed at that point in time with the chair, Mr. Ritchie, who was the chair of the of the uh, planning board, yep. and Caleb and Langer, yep. who was probably also another person who was part of this uh, uh, member of the board, Mr. John Harden, yep. Yep. and the alternate, which was Peter Hermosino. So th this special permit was actually signed off by these four individuals. The previous planning board. Who was part of a prior planning board. Right. And so th my question still is this here even though they have not filed this here, can the person, even though this is maybe not a legit special permit, can they still turn around and say, well, we are going to file it now? Well, I don't, I think. Is there an expiration time? Two years. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Two so years. Okay, right. so because of that, 
as a result of that, this is null and void. Right. Correct. So could we send a letter to them stating that to cease and desist all activities listed under the special permit that has but there's no special permit. And expired? No, well, I don't because I want to concede the permit. permit. Here's permit. what I want to do. I, I suggest you write in the following letter, which which I was working on the today, <clears> so I apologize. But to Cindy Phillips, who's the woman, right, that has it, at yeah. 55, uh, and say, we are writing, this would be on, you know, our letterhead, right? We are writing to inform you that we have received a complaint that you are operating a kennel for at least five large dogs in the property located at 55 Old Boston Turnpike owned by Dakota nominee trust, David Dakota trustee. Under Hubbardston general bylaws, um, what's that, 26, 26. Uh, regulation of dogs, only three dogs may be kept at a property with, without securing a kennel license. Under Hubbardston zoning bylaw 4.2J, a kennel for five or more dogs in a residential zone requires a special permit. According to town records, you had a kennel license for four dogs in 2019, which expired in March, March 31st, 2020, and was not renewed for either 2020 or 2021. Town records also indicate the planning board issued you a special permit on December 2nd, 2009, which never took effect because it was never recorded in the Registry of Deeds as required by Massachusetts General Laws 40A, Section 11. Mr. David Dakota also states that he never consented to the operation of the kennel at this location, and his consent is required as the sole trustee of the trust that owns this property. For the foregoing reasons, the kennel you are operating at 55 Old Turnpike Road is not in compliance with the state or local law and must be discontinued. Accordingly, the planning board is referring this matter to the Hubbardson Zoning Enforcement Officer and to the dog officer for further action. If you have ceased to operate this kennel at this location, please notify the planning board at the number provided above. And then CC this to dog officer, the town manager, or the town uh, administrator, and Roland. Yeah. May I make a suggestion? Yes. Can we time limit the time by which we are required to yes. ex expect a notification back from the current person this is being addressed to? Um, if you cease to operate the kennel at this location, please notify us immediately, right? Yes. Immediately. And then at but no later than. An actual specified time period. Okay. okay. Sure. But no Just later than. Yeah. But not later than. You don't want 30 days, two weeks? No. A week? I know 10 days. I know that the town clerk issued a um, bunch of fines and violation letters to her today. Today? Okay. This is big. So they didn't, and they didn't bother to tell me this is what. I didn't put the clerk on the letter. Right. So I, then I would CC this letter and send them to that the planning board has no enforcement power, but we believe that these, these violations should be enforced. Yes. Because we can't spend, our, we have no power to enforce no. it. And we have, to, we have to go with the enforcement. I think you should also CC it to the police department okay. because they get involved in a lot of these Quite calls. A bit. So and that's if the they know the background, they... Well, especially because this has a, this right has, now. I mean, the, the dog control, the dog officer is certainly capable, hopefully, but because of the type of dogs that are in here involved here, some form of security may be required additionally. Well, then well so we've got the police department, the clerk, the dog officer, mm -hmm. Roland. Town manager. Town Roland town and manager. the town manager. And we did, even though this is still on our list and it's coming back, and I was hoping John was going to be here tonight, but... I think we should send to the to to them a separate cover letter, copy them on this one, and then a cover letter saying we're expecting an enforcement action to be taken against this individual unless she writes that she's discontinued, unless we hear within the next ten days that well, she's discontinued. To, that to? to the whole line of them. Yes. The police, oh, okay. the clerk. Right. Okay. And this is very similar to the we other that have we have right now on the forty eight. Well, yeah. That's, that's part that's, of the discussion. That's in the next that's yeah. the next thing. <laughs> All right. So, so everybody agrees I can just fix this letter again yes. a little bit. I make a motion that we ask Alice to sign and send that letter and as revised. As a, as, a, uh, as, a, as, a, as a representative of the board, right? Correct. Okay. As an official letter from the board. Okay. I second that motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, vote. Monroe, aye. Bill Holman's aye. Steiger, aye. And Lithgow, aye. Okay. And thank you for addressing Thank this you for doing that. Oh. We 
I did hope you do it gets site? somewhere. Did you do a site visit? Because I thought that at some I, one point in time you no, were going you to go out there. No, I, I Bill told me not to go out there. Okay, good. Yeah. I'm glad yeah. you don't talk about it. No, that's, no, I've been but, down there numerous times yeah, over the Yeah, David Dakota showed up at the office Tuesday. It's, it's and a, he got in my face and said, I'm tearing down that fence in two weeks and then walked off. And I was like, David gets... Okay. <laughs> it's on your property. Right. But he thinks that the town actually is in charge of what happens on the land now. And well, I would love to see some action because they're. If, I, what, think I, I argue with these people. It, the enforcement people. What good is zoning if nobody's ever going to enforce it? Correct. Mm -hmm. We we need to send this out as a, a letter saying, look, this needs to be taken care of. And this has been an ongoing issue for a long time. I, Same with 248 Gardner Road. They both. This has been going on much longer. Have legal files that are. And we had a we had a process. It needs to be. It needs to go through. And Roland. we have the documents. Roland is the one who needs to do it. All of it needs. To, Roland needs to initiate. And if it. he's not, then we've got to do gotta something find about that. Yeah. Well, Roland was in on the the Zoom. The, the Zoom and has he seen those letters? Can you remind him we have a process for doing this from town council? Yeah. We just he, well, he knows really. he, that's the process is his job. He's a zoning enforcement officer. The town council sent over the how to write a zoning enforcement letter. So he was, uh, I don't know if he was a little peeved or if he was a little ticked off, but he got it and he said, why did we go to town council tell me how to do my job? Okay, so it is Roland <laughs> should be the lead person. Roland needs to be the one who's in charge of all of it. Okay, and I'll, I'll make him first. Yeah. And tell him, I mean, I, if somebody honestly could, it's I don't know how the, what the state of the dogs are. I'm a dog owner and I worry about them. Correct. So at well, some we point. we haven't had any complaints that they're not being taken care of. You haven't. Oh, that's good. So to know. I'm okay. just saying from the so it isn't a rescue. Today, if they're getting it. out, yes. So long as yes. somebody's taking care of them and takes them back in, then that's okay. But we didn't hear that either. Okay. So all right. All right. Well, we we'll, we leave it as. Yes. Sometimes I you put too many, a lot of things in a letter, and then it allows an opportunity to argue each little point. Yep. So this is just basically where it is. We know that she doesn't have it, and all right, moving on right along. Um, this Correction is another, look how late it is. Can I just do new business, right. Uh, right. take it out of order, um, before we get into the marijuana thing? Okay with me. Um, I just want to go down to new business. So Places Associates, there's a contract, which you got a copy of late. And the deal with that is, is that, um, and I think I explained this to, to David Nixon too, there's never been a written agreement between Places Associates in our town because every time uh, we, we or another board in town need his services on something, there's a contract between the board and him to provide these services, which is then okay, paid by the applicant, right? That's the way it worked for like, right? So, but many towns do have this overarching agreement, right? So what happened was Bill sent me a note saying, that his, he's been audited by his insurance company. And the insurance company is requiring that every municipality for which he does work, he has an agreement with the town itself. So this is the document that he's put together to do that. We don't sign it because it's with the town. But I did get a question from David Nixon. Um, you know, he wants to know we're satisfied with his services, so we want the town to do this, right? So I think the thing to do is if we if we read it, I mean, it would still go through town council and, uh, but yeah. But if you had a chance to read it, I read it. Mm -hmm. It's it's a pretty generic contract. Um, it okay. doesn't try to get him out of things, put all the liability on us. It's not unfair, and it does pretty accurately describe what he does for us. Mm -hmm. So I was just thinking, um, we should take a vote tonight to send, uh, to note, well, we, to to let the. Um, just a vote you can send to the town minister, the whole uh, to, the, to the town administrator. Just a vote that um, we have looked over the agreement, and we would, uh, be, and we're in favor of having places associates continue to provide service for the planning board. So a vote of support. Yeah. A vote of support for the contract. For the contract. As it's written. Yeah. That, yes, you can write it, say it that way. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that at this point in time the board. Uh, Send a letter. Send a letter to the town administrator indicating that we as a board support the not only the relationship that we have with uh, Place and Associates, but also that the, the relationship be guided by the contract 
that has been so provided and presented to us. Second, somebody? I'll make a second. For the discussion? None? Steiger. Holmes, aye. Monroe, aye. Lipton, aye. Unanimous. You want to send that to me and I'll send them and I'll just sign. Yeah, can type I, my name on it. Can I something. ask something? Yes. Since we already jumped down, I see under here we got an update for the Marinelli test. Can we, is there something you could throw out at us? You saw that, no, it isn't really an update. You saw my letter, right? Yes. Remember we had this letter? Uh-huh. So that's where it stands. Okay. But I, do you want me to follow up with that letter? Just with phone calls? Bill if, says yes. If you want to, I think. All right. I want it to be not, um, I want the letter to come off. We support doing this. We'd yes. really like to see this happen, but we really don't have the, the ability to do it. Correct. So, okay. I will follow up with the letter. Is that okay? I mean, a phone else? call. A phone call to Mr. Wiggins okay? yeah. and Mr. Sales and ask if, you know. Okay. Um, I figured it was, the letter was somewhat helpful because I told them who has the access to 68 and the fact that Brown needs fill and the fact that we favor housing over other development options. So it was a little bit of help, right? Yeah. But we can't take the whole thing on. Okay, so, and then also we might as well just do uh, seven, which is I, it's truly not unanticipated. But John, who came in, you know, to be reappointed, was the one that said to me, you know, 248, because he lives right there, is as bad as it ever was. Yep. I know, I see it all the time. Nothing's so, changed. Right, so I think we also should have a vote to send a, a another letter that we've had reports that it's not any better and we wish to proceed directly to an enforcement action on that okay too okay you should agree? we send this to the building inspector or to the selectman all of everybody yes. i think all the letters need to be included to the selectman so yep. they understand that enforcement isn't happening like and it again should. um i would also cc the police department so they not they understand what's going on okay the same same group we did the last time except the dog office. My, my, my understanding was is that there had been a discussion and there had been a fairly large group of members of the town who had addressed this in the past but we have not received any updates on this here. The select, we did get a call from a neighbor when after the the original discussion took place and there was some movement and they had gotten rid of some of the vehicles and they had gotten some dumpsters and the trash were getting cleaned up and then it just came to a sudden abrupt halt and then there was some turnover in uh, the selectman's office because it was the select board admin that was kind of heading this all up and getting the coalition together um, so there wasn't any more follow-up on that and Roland never took to the and this is how you write an enforcement letter and just to be very clear there's still commercial activity taking place at the location well and we know if it is commercial but it appears that it could be it appears to be right okay yeah we don't have any concrete we don't evidence. know unless somebody goes up there and tells us i don't think but there's but also it's a storage of yeah, there's also multiple, there's, there's also no class two or class three license at that facility correct exactly and there are more than two uh, unregistered slash unlicensed vehicles correct. at the location, correct? Okay. Should we send a letter just out the fact that what's the update on this to all these departments, what's transpired? Well, Where I think, we with I think in addition, I, I think in addition to the, the way we may want to phrase the, the letter is, is that this was presented originally by our board to the select board. It appears that action has not been taken and that at this point in time, we as a planning board ask that the zoning enforcement officer commence, an enforcement commence the enforcement action and provide the feedback that we need as the planning board Which in order to understand received. whether or not further action needs to be taken. Okay. Which we haven't received yet. Anything, correct? We have not right. received there, anything. There was a meeting scheduled to go to a site visit and yeah, then the admin reported back that there was that they were actually cleaning up their cleanups. act and then it was so started. that was we didn't go to the meeting and that's where it ended, it ended right there and then it's so instead of sending a kind of a nasty leave. letter should we just reiterate the fact that nothing has transpired since this has stopped and this and we have a, and this we popped up many months ago right and then since we have a new town administrator maybe a little sugar going on instead of vinegar maybe we should do it that way well we just to say we need this taken care of where well, I we recommend that we proceed to an enforcement, to enforcement action, action on this. thank you Yes. Okay. Just, and oh. we never got any feedback from anybody either, yes. correct? 
Yes, I'll okay. try to. Can you get those dates okay. together yeah. when so we have a little one paragraph history of where it stands? Yes. And the select board is the business that. licensing authority for Correct. the town, isn't it? Correct. So it's licensing for licensing for commercial activities of the type that potentially could have been there. Which but because there but but because we are from a planning board perspective looking at it from a zoning perspective. Mm -hmm. The, the, the biggest question here is is what is what is being violated is the violation solely the fact that there's many unlicensed and potentially unregistered vehicles at the lot and separately is this commercial activity taking place at the lot the commercial activity is certainly something that we have authority to Correct. work on and enforce yeah, that's a good idea the the unlicensed vehicles I think is under the general bylaws correct and so as a result of that, that is, that is the select board that needs to manage that. And so we brought it up with the select board because of the number of unlicensed vehicles. So we did not know whether or not there was commercial activity involved with this here, which it appears to be, but we don't, Correct. We don't know. But the authority to, to grant a dealer a license or anything along the lines of that should be arriving with the select board. Correct. So Correct. Yeah. With and only with the select board and taking into consideration that it's not a commercially zoned but, area. But I think what happened, our town administrator got activated could that have yes. been all part of this? My recollection is is that there was a meeting with the select board, and at that point in time, this plan of meeting amongst the various entities in the town was going to address this issue. And then that, that it dropped. appears that it did not materialize or yeah, because nothing came out of it. Yeah, because somebody said they were going to do something about, you know, oh. like the, the tenant started to right. take action, and then as soon as he backed off, oh, that's what he <laughs> it's bugging me. Okay, me too. I was waiting for it to come. <laughs> okay, you got just a couple more announcements, and then I don't. I'm, it's late, but I'm going to give 15 minutes. Yes. To the the, the uh, marijuana stuff. So I just wanted to say, the Ragged Hill lot, the Habitat for Humanity got their building permit today. Oh, awesome! Yay, awesome. Mallory. Yes. So Congratulations. One That's small really good victory. News. That's awesome. And the sign by law is now in the Attorney General's office, for approval by them. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. And what about the other bylaw change that we made? The one of the uh, the growth. Yeah, well, the growth we have to take that up. That's still well, no, because we we did extend it, right? Oh, we did extend. That has to go through to the AG. That uh, Lori. Yeah, he, the, Francois is right about that. Thank you, Francois. Uh, yeah. yeah, I didn't even think of that when she told me this today that it was with the AG. All right, yeah. Lori. I'll get an update from her and let you guys know. Okay, let us know. Don't forget. May I uh, quickly comment on that? I, I think, I mean, from our last sessions that took place, you had indicated there was potentially some concern by extending it just by one year because people think of this year potentially as kicking the can down the road, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and my, my concern here is, is that I don't think we should just send this here t potentially to the Attorney General's office without an explanation and thought that went behind the extension. Right. Main reason is, is number one is, is that the planning board had uh, enormous amounts of other work that came upon it. This did creep up to us as a surprise mm -hmm. because okay. we didn't know this. And second is we had the COVID. So we are asking for this extension, not just simply to kick okay. the can down the road, but rather to give us more time. Yeah, give us time to do the actual work that needs to be done in order to be able to look at the growth and also the master plan. And the master plan. Okay, I'll send okay. you a, like a paragraph that okay. we put in. The planning board's asked that we include, send this, include yeah. the following explanation, okay? I hope you have a list of what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay. <laughs> Heard my fingers going, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and I also just wanted to say, and then we're going right back, then we're going to marijuana, is that there was a letter that I that Mallory forwarded to me, and I don't, you know, sometimes I get stuff, and I don't know whether you really want to hear it, but... The people that have bought the, they, uh, they have bought it or maybe they're still optioned to buy it, the 36 Gardner Road storage facility. Yep, yes. Um, have wrote a letter, wrote a note that Mallory cor correctly forwarded to Bill, which was basically. They wrote directly to Bill. Oh, they did write directly, and then he forwarded to me. Okay, all right, so I got the order wrong. But anyway, it involved, um, I think, mostly grading issues right can we change the grading here and there is and it can it be done as an as a um you know technical amendments to the plan there was a lot of issues between bill and them over that 
correct? There was. Well, no, well, Bill and the former guy. So I don't know how, how inclined Bill will be to give, but it'll depend on, you know, what, what he's asking for. I right, would say. and why. And why. So, I, so I'm not asking us to take any action. I'm just saying Good that I did get that, because I try to report all mm -hmm. communications. Mm -hmm. So, okay, now we need to go back and do the, the uh, which I really hope we have a lot more time for. But uh, Madam Chair, before we do that, uh, under new business, uh, yes. I did receive uh, an email from the EDC. Uh, the Economic Development Commission. They are going to be meeting next week on the 21st. Oh, good. And on their agenda is talking about uh, a couple sample accessory use bylaws for the farms. Great. Cool. They, uh, they were specifically looking at uh, Rutland and one in Bolton. So. Oh, I know we had one, I know. But I was talking to somebody that went to the milk room, which is the first one launched in Rutland. Mm -hmm. So, and I know that, well, great. Just remind them, you know, keep us in the loop. And I also, told him to um, to say to them, you know, they, they're part of this expanding the commercial district and we need to be part, have a seat at that table at some point. Mm -hmm. So he's going to do that too. Oh, and there's one more thing, which is like one more, which <laughs> is MRPC wants a representative from this committee. Yeah, did you ever get a response back on what that entails? No. You know, she never got back. But... Mallory, who's our source of all inside knowledge here, says that... <laughs> she's got the end. Yeah, well, that she's just dealt with other boards. Is that nobody actually from these towns goes to MRPC meetings. It's just who MRPC reaches out to, mm -hmm. we believe. So I said, if that's the case, then they can designate me. But if you have to go to meetings, right. then I need somebody else because I've done all the... I'm already on MJTC and, you know, it's... So, um, do you want to find out more, or you want to just? Yeah, we can find out more if we need to. I take, talk to her, and if it's if they don't expect me to attend regular meetings, just put my name in it. Unless okay. anybody else wants to do this. Well, it has to be a vote. It has to be an officially oh. appointed. I make so. that motion. So <laughs> <laughs> well, you're really good at that. So before, <laughs> before, before we go with that, yeah. when, when we had our last meeting, I thought there were still some open. Uh, positions that we needed, like for example, I'm part of the CIPC. You're part of the etc. I thought there was maybe one or two that were still open, right? We do we have a list of those. Uh, we do, but I don't have it right here. Okay. But well, did we get? I thought we got them all. I thought the we question did was because we we knew that John Damalia was trying to get them. John John was the former economic development Correct. committee, but he's never gone to any of the meetings, and his term expired. Correct. So but I thought there were still a few committees that we still needed to fill. What about that one about the town manager? You're doing that too, right? The uh, Capital Improvements Committee? Capital that Improvements, is that's me. Mm -hmm. The CIPC. CIPC, EDC, <laughs> MRPC. ABC, DEF. I don't know. We Let look it over again. I'm going to pull it open okay. right now. Because I actually so do kind of have that. So we'll make sure that we... Have we the, should do a list. We have now. all of our have a list, yeah. too much going on. And, and just put it in the. July. Oh, I know the CPC. Does anybody want to do that besides me? I. That's that is actually a really important committee. But. It's generally chairs, generally, I think. Generally what? The chairman of committees that are. Oh, but I don't thanks. think it's by. It's required to be the chair. You want to break that mold? I would love to break that mold. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, MRPC. I mean, it's it or the the CPA. It's how those funds get divvied up, right? And so, but nobody, you know, you, whoever represents us has to talk. But it's affordable housing. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. What do we have to advocate for? They that's need right, because we are. We are that committee, mm -hmm. and that's how, point. so the 20, which was such a small ask. I mean, open space got 75,000, and but we still got pushback even on our 20, you know? I mean, it's, mm -hmm. the town's not used to doing this stuff, so, and I don't know that we're going to have a need for that money, aside from maybe helping out a little bit more with Habitat or something, because I don't know, I don't know. But if anyone else wants it, but it's very fascinating committee. They did the playground, they did, but it's a commitment. It's a yep. two-hour meeting once a month. I can't so. take any more on, on your... Yeah. 
I'm hoping to pass off the chairmanship at some point this year. So I thought, well, if I kept it. <laughs> oh. um, we should have the full members of the board here to well, work I, on that. After we have a vote, uh, don't you have to take, we didn't, yes, we have to take a vote. Yeah, we need to follow. That's your first thing you're supposed to do after you have an election. A vote for? We reorganize after the election. We, we did already yeah. reorganize. Oh, you did that? Oh, okay. we, yeah, we did that. We did okay. that. We did that. I don't think you were Yeah, there and right what we now. did was... Okay. was Congratulations, like, I, Bill, your chair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, committee. The committee is just... Make the motion in Thanks a lot. I just agreed he just, to stay he just on for a really while. Right. I took a hope of halfway through. Your tan went away. So, <laughs> yes, we so we have the CPC, C, okay. EDC, CIPC, MJCC. Wow. Okay, and do we have not, and people appointed to all those? Yeah, you were CPC, Chris was EDC, CIPC was Francois, and then you were doing MJCC? Correct. Okay. And as long as it's a nominal, I think it is for MRPC, you can put me on it. Okay. Uh, EDC, I'm still missing one. CPC, EDC, oh, the. CIPC, and then the monitor is CIPC. Community. Yeah, CPC. The CIPC. CIPC. Capital Improvement, Capital Improvement Planning yeah, Committee. and that's Francois. Have you checked your phone? So, um. It doesn't happen that fast. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody nice. wants, would rather go to MJTC, if you're, you're an engineer and you're really into, like, engineering of streets but, but you got to go there because they have this how you find out about the grant opportunities you know um it's two o'clock in the afternoon it's really inconvenient time but Very inconvenient. We need to sign it. um anyway let's go with that and you've got nine minutes okay <laughs> <laughs> she's making me sign I'm sign kidding, up here I'm all right you can Thank print you. it in it yeah. okay so um so okay, we have to talk about marijuana. We have to actually get somewhere on this. And I was like really bogged down with it. And then I talked to Christopher, who seemed like light at the end of the tunnel. He was willing to take this on. So um, go ahead, suggest so, an approach to this problem because we need to get there. Come so on. yes, so I'm uh, I am happy to to take a lot of this on and been starting to do some of the research behind the scenes. Um, I did want to hear from everybody on what they thought some of their kind of key issues were on things that we should be looking for in similar bylaws. Uh, because I know one thing that jumps out to all of us is the way our scheme works for residential or the way it doesn't really work but is still in there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's some other issues that other towns have looked into, like the idea that the scheme should be helpful for people who are farmers and are maybe taking a small portion of their land and using that for cultivation. And that different towns have taken kind of different approaches to it, so I wanted to kind of get a sense of what our personality was as a board for what we wanted to look at and investigate. Are you, are you indicating that they are looking at it as a farming enterprise instead of as a commercial enterprise? Um, Somewhat, yes. They're trying to not make it impossible for a farmer to, say, do like an acre of his land set up as a grow. Okay. So at, at where I think that comes into play would be the idea of trying to push, it, say some of the towns have tried to just exclude all residential. Uh, some have done things to kind of push it in towards whatever their commercial zoning is. Mm -hmm. um, so for, for us, if we were to try to leave the door open for some of those farmers that aren't necessarily in the commercial area, then we're going to have to think about making some compromises on that. Do you have some examples that you can down the road share with us in terms of other communities where this has already been floated and looked at? Yep, there's, uh, there's a town out in Western Mass now, uh, Williamsville, I think it is. Williams. Williams. Yeah, Williams. Williams. No, not Williamstown, Williamsville. In the Berkshires. Yeah, it was in the Berkshires. Yeah. Uh, and they, they've been working on essentially the same thing as we're looking at starting now for essentially the same reasons. That once they, they got to know what the process was like, they had mm -hmm. an idea what they wanted from it, and they also realized that 
the uh, the opportunities for doing it in residential areas were completely untenable as they were mm -hmm. for essentially the same thing that we looked at and we identified as that well you kind of could try to do this on a two acre residential lot and because of the requirements from the CCC you'd have barbed wire fencing essentially on the lot. But that lines. was exactly my, my concern yeah. here is, is that the whole security component that comes along with this here so. it just and I mean, th this is beyond the individual capa the individual's capabil ability to have their own plans, which I think is like limited to X number of plants per, yep. per, 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 per person. Six plants per person, 12 plants per household for exactly. personal use, yes. Precisely. But if we're talking about something that is really different, which is yep. really more of a economic growth opportunity for somebody that goes beyond the personal consumption. Correct, a CCC right. approved tier grower. My biggest concerns in a residential area is just seeing problems we had up here on Gardner Road with the odor, the security, um, and if they're going to have that, one of the things that we'll probably talk about later, what are we going to do to hide that? Like you talked about the bushes and things like that. If that's going to be allowed and we're going to allow it in town so we can do it in residential, then we better really make sure it's not going to bother people too, because the odor, the odor is very that's strong. Fun. Odor is def definitely a problem. Security for me, I think, is also something that needs to be taken into consideration. Right, because I'm used to fencing. I don't mind it. I worked in jail for 30 years, 30 years so I'm okay <laughs> with it. But, uh, it's like, oh, but most people don't like that. So that's another thing. But if you put privacy barriers up, I think that's a good thing. And like they talked about up on Gardner Road. Press. But we also have to take into consideration, I mean, from a residential perspective, the impact that has on your neighbors. On the neighborhood, yes. So if you have a two-acre lot, but <laughs> you, you, your, your, your acreage abuts right next to somebody else. Correct. Um, like the offset, the, <laughs> the yeah. offsets, I think, are very important. Correct. Um, and the security components still needs to be looked into. And I think to Bill's point, things such as odor, things such as growing lights. Um, well, they said in our process, I believe, the growing lights aren't used at night anyways. Yeah. So uh, an example of some things that towns have done in relation to that is they, they've set a minimum lot size uh, yeah. in, in any zoning area. Mm -hmm. okay. So be it five or 15 acres mm -hmm. for even doing the minimum grow. So say, I believe you can do a tier two in, in our residential zoning, mm -hmm. but if you had a minimum size of, um, of 15 acres, you could have that pretty far away from your neighbors right, and the property. It, like it, Ashburn has a five acre minimum lot size in a residential zone. Barry has a 20 acre minimum lot size in a residential zone. Because a 60 acre lot would be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to bother anybody. Yeah, say a 60 yeah. acre lot with 20 feet of road frontage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Is that what Mary wants? I think to it do? should no. be. No. <laughs> no. <put> a church. <laughs> <laughs> she wants to put a church of marijuana. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> You could also do the sack for? <laughs> no, 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 I'm not saying that. Don't set me up. <laughs> <laughs> also but, uh, having a sliding scale. So a tier one, you need at least a five acre minimum lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A tier two, you need a ten acre minimum lot. Right? And then Which doesn't sound unreasonable. Because I, I know I've talked to a lot of people over the years, they know I'm involved with zoning a lot, and they think it's horrendous that the town of Hubberston requires two hundred feet with two acres to build. And I said, you know what, the, the people that live in this community don't but want a lot of homes on top of each other, and that's why it's like that. Yeah, um, yeah there, there's a lot of public policy arguments on both sides mm -hmm. of that, and a lot of state legislation because of it. So right. It but, but one of the issues that came up with this one was the, the availability of water and the, and the, and Correct. the and water sure intense well. use. So that's a good reason for saying you can't draw you know, 50,000 gallons of water a day from a two acre lot, you know? Mm -hmm. So it isn't all just about, and then I think uh, the other thing I want is setbacks. And the setbacks, right. I was working through these benchmark towns, but the setbacks, it's 300 feet from a residential zone is common in a number of the ones I looked at. Is that what you've seen too? Yeah, Chris. 100 and some bylaws is a minimum I've seen, and 300 and several. So, because the otherwise, setbacks <laughs> just apply to buildings. Right. So this means the whole grower, the fence, you know, the, so it isn't just the odor, but it's also the razor wire and everything, the lights, <laughs> the security lights. And 
A couple of the towns I looked at did. Um, I think I, I'm allergic see. to marijuana. Just to mention them. A couple towns did have formal plans and formal requirements for uh, for odor mitigation. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. I'm sorry. Formal Thank plans. For uh, what? Some of them did have formal requirements for odor mitigation plans to be submitted. So whereas that's something that kind of grew up organically in the process we had with the ones that came before us, it's an actual formal requirement. And that's my biggest towns. worry, too, because a lot of the discussion we've had with the folks that we're working with now is the odor is a problem. So right. I don't want to put anybody through that anywhere else. 300 feet should help. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be right next door Unless out your window. Unless blowing the wrong way. Can yeah. you control but the wind? No. But I think we're going to learn a lot in the, the next couple months. Yes. With, uh, couple grows that are right. going to be happening in town so that's going to guide us a bit too assuming they get plants in the ground. I was gonna say, they're not 100 percent confident in that they're going to get their plants in. They're not confident in that? No? I don't think so. I've been looking the at. The CCC meets in August. Their final walkthrough has to be done by I think it was whatever Monday the 27th I think is for the CCC representative to make their recommendation to the board to vote on allowing their license. Um, so they're not looking at getting a license until late August. Which is much later than they need in order to be able to get But something. we will still be able to grow in the two cups. Yes. But, but not the but not other the plants in the ground. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah. So a couple other things that were on my list is, is also, it's not clear to me it outdoor whether outdoor grow excludes or includes greenhouses it's just I not clear to me does it well i bet i believe it includes it. it's part of the operation okay so am i wrong um <laughs> possibly yeah okay i mean I, greenhouses are allowed in our residential districts okay so and these are not like conventional greenhouses but, but this is part of a special permit too wouldn't that right change well, I just think we should say there are or they aren't allowed, and if they are allowed, the size, personally. And I don't, I don't have any problem with allowing them as long as people I, I, understand that these have grow lights under covers. It's not like tomatoes, you know, yeah. and it, a lot of water use. And I mean, the problem with greenhouses, I think, is in a residential area, is, is that it can make something look very, very much rapidly as a commercial mm -hmm. enterprise. Yes. And so... Again, if you are if if you have bought a piece of property in a residential s uh, area and you suddenly see big greenhouses coming up, yes, it is agricultural, but it is yeah. it is but it has this it has this look of commercial. But on the side of the other side of that coin, if this property is large enough, set back far enough in a residential area, which we have, I think I think you should have not an open door, but a way to allow that. So the question, the question is more: Do you have a three-acre lot where you put two acres worth of greenhouses and still have right. you know, whatever technical yeah. offsets? You I, I'm saying like a 60. If somebody has a big piece of property that they want to yeah. possibly sell for an operation, I think we should have something in that bylaw that allows a special permit under special circumstances. I don't want, I, I don't want a bylaw to lock everything out. No, as long I, as you can depend on the town or the bot. The not, not, disagree, not disagreeing about this here. I right. think we need to be very conscious, conscientious about the impact that something like that Correct. can have Correct. on the neighborhood and on the residents who are abutters. But if it's big enough parcel, because we've always talked about trying to bring in more business, I don't want a pot farm next to me on the 100 acres behind me um, if they sell that. But is that feasible to look at? Also, I don't know. I'm just, I wanted to throw it out there mm -hmm. for everybody to think about. You could go again with the, you know, tier one, five acres, tier two, ten, and get right, up to, right, yeah. right. I mean, that, something like that. That potentially fixes a lot of those problems just right. on its own. I haven't seen that done in the ones I looked at, but I don't know why you couldn't do it. Yeah. Also, um, on my list is, I think we need to limit the number of pot shops, which we're allowed to do. It's, Yeah, so many communities got a lot. And it's supposed to be not less than... What is it? Twenty percent of what you have, really? Anyway, it would be one. It's not more. It's not, not more than. There's another one in Gardner, in Gardner, six, seven miles up the road. 
Yeah. They're building. They're putting the building up now. They oh, are, really? Yeah. And there's already one up the road. There they is. haven't gone for their nice. special permit yet. They, no. No. It's just they have had a host community agreement, but they have never. Okay. Yeah. So the building's there, but they haven't gone forward with anything. Well, well I that's just another thing. I think it's something to look at because you don't want 10, 15 of these right. things. Right. I yeah. think so. If you could jot that down, and then I also don't want to see, just like we did with solar fields, I don't want to see clear cutting of woods to plant marijuana. So. It's got to be some very, very important. Not yeah. So there were um, there were a couple towns that had green energy requirements for new builds. Is that something that we're interested in? What kind of requirements? Green community. So if you're going to build or put this up with the roof of it, you're going to put a regular roof. You're going to put yeah. You have to be able to show that 25 percent of it was going to come from um, renewable energy. Renewable energy. Correct. Yeah. Say one of the communities around as you drive down the road, and all you see is solar fields. The other thing I think it's important yeah. for us to keep in consideration for something like this here is, is I mean, we got into an interesting uh, situation here with uh, uh, with this freezer <laughs> facilities yes. and things of that nature. I, I think we need to very clearly establish what what can and cannot be allowed. I did see a town that specifically excluded any operation in trailers. I, I, I think that's, that's probably not. something that we need to very much look at. And the other thing that comes along with this here is, is that power and the use of generators. Main reason I'm bringing this up is, is that noise abatement is becoming a much larger issue for our communities because if people do require to have a backup generator, that's something that is different. Whereas if you have no power and you're going to be completely reliant on a generator which is going to be running 24 hours a day and the impact that that has. On the other side of that, if it's only going to be a temporary operation, so like just like this one that's supposed to start up now until they're done with it, it's only going to last a few months, um, and they're only going to start the refrigeration up for a short period of time to get them out of there. I think. We should think, have that in the back of our minds when we're writing this, too. Because a temporary thing, and, I, te and I, I didn't want to bring this up at the last meeting, but there was a septic system going in across the street over here, and they brought the excavator in on a huge tractor trailer, flatbed. And the workers got out, they blocked the traffic, and it took them quite a few minutes to maneuver and get it in, and they unloaded, and then they brought it out. Dropping those freezers off on Gardner was no different operation. It's the same thing. I, I think a lot of that just went a little too far. It's not a big deal if you're dropping it off once and then you got to pick it up later and it's done. I, I, I think we need to keep that in perspective. If they're going to do it two or three times a day and you're going to block the road and create all this problem, you're going to have all this noise, that's a totally different story. But the question, though, is is what does, what does the law, what does our law say? And well, I think our law, I, I mean, Bill brought up the issue and I think he brought it because that's, it, it is very clearly stated that you have to come in. You cannot back up into in, into so these. So uh, all these companies that come in and back your track the trails, and we should have them stop their operation. No, that, this I mean, was a temporary I, I'm, thing. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just stating. I mean, what is, what is, yeah. what is the requirement? And so because the question right, right now you're saying if, if I come in from my company and want to do work on this property over here, I can't pull in or I, I can't back out of that property. So he means I can't work there. Because I have to bring the excavator and unload it on dirt because I can't put it on pavement. I understand the issue of practicality. The yep. question here is, is what does the law state? If the law needs to be looked at and we need to therefore review I think it's that. A state law. We but th that my 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 question is my concern here is is are we are we bending the law or are we following the law? Right. And is okay. the, is the, does does the law allow you for special circumstances such as that and does that fall within that? purview or not. Right. Okay. okay. So I think we need to investigate that. That's all I'm saying. Here. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. I wanted to throw that in there because I've, I've seen it too many times <coughs> that it's allowed, but if it's going to be an ongoing thing every day, no. But if it's, I'm bringing this truck in, I'm dropping this off, and then I'm parking it, and then I'm going to leave with it two months later. And uh, I in my quick look at a few, I didn't see anybody addressing anything like that in any of their bylaws for this. Okay. But I, I think what he was talking about up there was the fact that he didn't have power. Yeah. And National Grid wasn't accommodating them so we could get this grow in. And I think that's what, and I could be wrong, yeah. but that's yeah. what I was hearing. It was, it was just a 
And we and we said thing. we did say he could not back in those freezer trucks because it was sixty eight. But yep. that was just specific to that his project. So you need to think about that. Okay. Do you have enough to go on? Yes. We've, we've sat here a long time. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll take a mo. You can. You could. We'll put you on next time. See how far you can get. My goal is to have something we could present it in the fall. Maybe that's optimistic. But I think that might be a little ambitious. But it I think might be. <laughs> <laughs> well, considering it took us two years for the sign bylaw. Yeah. Well, I the realize. other side of it is, is we we also we should reach out to industry about this too. We yep. shouldn't just be doing this in a. And whether it is we reach out to the shops that are in the town or else we reach out to the Growers Association, mm -hmm. we, we should at least be requesting a comment to help validate our process. There, there is a farmer's group in town, you know, an organization of farms, plus the CDC. Are you talking farmers or, or marijuana uh, growers? Marijuana growers specifically. But. Is there an organization? Oh, I don't yeah, know about in town, some. but there are farmers in town. But uh, yeah, there's right. a marijuana growers. Yeah, there were like three or four marijuana grower organizations, but I couldn't find out which one of them was actually credible. Because it looked like some of them were just people putting up Facebook pages. And I have, <laughs> you can get direct con. I have a direct contact at the CCC. I don't know if that would help. He probably knows all the people. Yeah, that might help. Yeah, yes. But t now when you go to the EDC meeting, mm -hmm. tell them what we're up to. Yeah. And say we like their. What do they think about? What do you think? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so our next meeting, guys, is the fifth of August. August fifth. We'll see what. We already have an A and R that was submitted today, so those things are already in now. August what? August fifth. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Are we good? Yes, Anybody want to make I'll a motion? I'll make that motion to Ooh. adjourn it. <laughs> Bell. I second that motion. Clutch. <laughs> Am I good? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.